I'm going to call this meeting of the Monroe County Council to order. This is our meeting for Tuesday, May 14, 2024. We are meeting here in the Nat U Hill room at the Monroe County Courthouse. I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Uh, and with that, I want to note that we have one counselor remote, our own Jeff McKim, member at large, is remote joining us. Counselor, are you hearing us okay? I am indeed. Do you hear me? Yes, yep. we hear you great. So we're off to a good great. start. Here in the Nat U Hill, I have Counselor Iverson, Counselor Crossley, Counselor Hawk, Counselor Munson, and I would note that Counselor Wiltz is absent this evening. All right. I'd ask all to join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We're going to now move on to adoption of agenda. And I just want to note that we have item 12A and 12B ARPA requests. I would ask unanimous consent that we could table that to the May 28th agenda, being given that there is no request before us. Any objections? No objections. Without objection, so ordered. I'd also ask to add two items. I'm going to do these one at a time. I'm going to ask to add an item regarding the recent communication from the Capital Improvement Board, otherwise commonly known as the CIB. And this will be an opportunity for any counselor that wish to make a comment on uh, the communication from the Capital Improvement Board if they so wish to. And this will be following item eight on the agenda. Any objections to adding that? to tonight's agenda. No. No, no objection. No objection, so ordered. And then I'll also ask, we have a PAC recommendation. I believe they were meeting yesterday, right? That's correct. Uh, a discussion and consideration of a soil and water job description. I'm gonna ask that that will be placed uh, before item 13 on the present agenda. And I know that's been in consideration for some time and that's why we're trying to move Either it quickly. Wait, wait. In, uh, one moment. Yeah. Uh, I need to see which one's 13 because um, I had asked for a presentation from the council office having to do with uh, the additional expenses that we have added that would be ongoing. Mm -hmm. So when, when will that be presented? Because the whole point in that was to have full information before we voted on new positions. Absolutely. I don't know if this helps Councilor Hawk, but that position that uh, soil and water conservation is asking for this evening was in the last budget. So it's been presently budgeted if that information helps you to know. Uh, but if not, we could ask for staff to do that during that but that item. I do not have um, the numbers that sh that was done. I've worked on that all day gotcha. um, trying to get, you know, where uh, everybody started in the budget and where everybody ended up. I don't have all of that. I can get it to, to right. everyone following the meeting, but I, like I said, it, I didn't know about it until yesterday and I just was not able to complete mm -hmm. it sure. timely. Sure. Okay. So we will not be able to hear that. And I sh should have noted that I, I'd asked Michelle that and she had told me that so that's on me. So we can put this on the agenda for our next meeting. We certainly could. If, do you think that's enough time to get that? You could, um, just if you do that though, that delays it going to WIS. And if you want it back in time oh, for the June no, I'm meeting. Not she, means the, the, she means the additional information. Oh, the additional the, information, yeah. yes. I can have that by okay. the next meeting, right. yes. Right. And and this, the only reason I suggested that is because that, that gives us full information before we vote on that new. Uh, so I'll just uh, decline to vote in favor of that uh, because with everybody we have on staff, if we can't figure out what we have included and put in uh, extra dollars for this in this year, in addition to what we started out the year with, uh, there's something amiss. Yeah. Well, uh, absolutely. So we'll hear item 13 with note that this has been budgeted in the current county budget for this year. All right. 
Any objections to adding that before item 13? I don't even know which one None. 13 was, so. Item 13 is a food and beverage tax advisory commission report from Councillor Munson. Okay, great. All right, hearing no objections, so ordered. All right, any other changes to the agenda before we get going this evening? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move on to public comment. Before we do on public comment, we're going to uh, hear uh, from Bob Patty with Enhance. You all recall Enhance was here recently. If you want to come forward, Mr. Patty, he's going to give us an update. He's also got Jen Pearl with him from our own Bloomington Economic Development Corporation. And so we, he's got a special announcement he asked to make, and uh, we're going to give him some time to make that to us. Welcome, Mr. Patty. It's good to have you back in the Nat U Hill, as well as Ms. Pearl. Thank you very much, and thank you for the time you've uh, given me here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm coming to uh, tell you that Enhanced is uh, not going to be pursuing the project at the former GE refrigerator uh, plant, which Cook has been renovating. Uh, we are greatly disappointed but I wanted to come forward, let you know that uh, in fact, we are discontinuing that effort and kind of how we got here. Uh, we did have a number of different ways that we felt the, uh, the plan would move forward and unfortunately, um, none of those have worked out. Uh, there's been um, a lot of money being put into semiconductor development in the US and worldwide. Uh, we are disappointed that we were not able to get uh, CHIPS funding and there were some other uh, avenues that were open uh, to us that did not pan out also. Uh, the private funding at this point is very concerned that the huge investment made worldwide now in semiconductors, it may result in a glut in the market and that has turned off a lot of the private investment. Uh, almost a half a trillion dollars now has been um, put forward in government funding worldwide, and that will double to triple capacity of semiconductors over the next three years. And anyone would say that that is far greater capacity than the demand would sustain. So uh, as a small company, we are seeing pullback in people's desire to uh, venture into the market at this point. Um, nothing has changed in our opinion of that site. I think it would be a great site for advanced manufacturing. Uh, we are continuing with our plans in uh, the Odin Westgate None of that has changed. That money was separately raised. We have it in hand and we are moving forward and we will go into production there at the beginning of next year. Our workforce is growing, equipment is being installed. So we are still dedicated to being in Indiana. Unfortunately, a plant of the scale that we had planned at the Cook site is just not in the cards, at least today. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you telling us. M Ms. Pearl, did you want to add any comments? Yeah. So um, thank you so much for having us here today. Because this was something we originally had announced publicly here, we wanted to be able to share that update here as well. And although that's not the news that we had hoped to bring today, um, we're always very grateful for the partnership with all of you, with great companies like Enhanced and others. And we want to be as transparent as possible um, you know, about the projects that we have going on in the community. Um, so a few things that I'll say is while this may not be moving forward, um, the Westgate area is still within our um, labor market because um, there's a large proportion of people um, down in that area that live in our community. So we're really encouraged to hear about, you know, the continued commitment there. Um, the other things that I'd like to mention is um, that there have actually been some very good things that have come out of this process. Um, one is gathering the community in conversation around what's possible. Um, not only for innovation along the corridor that runs from Indy to Crane, but also within our community. Um, it has also reframed how we see uh, the former GE site and the Westside Employment Zone. 
And so we are um, actually very grateful to Cook Group and others um, because we're looking at how we can use that as a springboard to promote that for um, future employment growth as well. Um, another reminder that we would kind of share, and I will also uh, defer to attorneys um, for the county as well on this, but sometimes the public has questions about tax abatements. They're like, oh, was funding given away for this or what have you? Whenever we do a tax abatement in partnership with government and a company, it is contingent on performance. Um, so when both parties are able to you know, uh, fulfill what they had hoped to do, that's when it triggers the abatement. So it's not like a check was written or anything like that had happened. So if anyone has questions or concerns about that, we're happy to talk more and would also defer as well to um, you know, the county attorney. Um, and then apart from that, um, and I know that uh, Council Member Deckard and I had talked about this earlier, but um, we do not let our foot off the gas um, when it comes to creating opportunities for our community. Um, we know that you cannot control global markets or control you know, federal decisions or other things like that, and things, business conditions can change. Um, we still have 11 projects um, throughout the community that we've worked on the last few years that are still bearing fruit. Um, and we still have some great targets um, for what we want to go after for growing future opportunities. Um, and we remain a partner both for our employers and for the government um, in good times and other times as well. Um, so we are, we are here for that. Um, and also ha happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much to both of you. We'll see if counselors have any questions or comments. Councilor Munson. I'll comment that we're very glad that your Odin project is uh, is going forward, and who knows, maybe things will turn, and we'll see you back in Bloomington. I would certainly like nothing better. <laughs> Councilor Hawk. Yes, I just wanted to say it was such a pleasure uh, hearing you speak the last time you came, and it just made everybody feel so positive, and you still have that smile on your face, and that's got to be a little harder this time around. But we appreciate your presence and, and the fact that you gave Monroe County a shot at this. And I know that you had to have given it all that you had to try to make it work. And maybe things will turn around in the future and you'll think of us again. And uh, so good luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Iverson. I, I just want to offer you know similar remarks. Uh, I wish we were here on better circumstances, but obviously things are outside of a lot of our control on some of these things. But I just want to echo the remarks of my colleagues have made. We're not going to let our foot up off the gas on our end, and we're going to continue to move forward towards economic vitality in this community. So thank you for coming here, and thank you for your, your transparency. Councilor McKim. Yes, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure working with you, uh, Mr. Petty, and I do hope, I echo my colleagues, uh, that I do hope that we'll still be able to uh, work together in the future. Uh, I also thank you for uh, having me, encouraging me to uh, learn a lot more about advanced packaging. So it, was, it was quite an education. Thank you. I, I want to note, if, if, if counselors will let me just for a moment, that I appreciate very much Ms. Pearl, when this began to arrive, as uh, the, the news that it is came really fast uh, to us to just say, hey, be prepared. And then if I recall right, when after informing as many public officials as possible, just to kind of keep this on your horizon, and I appreciate that. I appreciate also that you came in here with bad news. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will say this, and Ms. Pearl had to hear my soliloquy on this. I'll try to keep it shorter this time. I'm a child of the RCA Thompson job losses in this community. And that means that every time we can attract someone like you to create jobs here, for this public official, we will go after that wholeheartedly. When we lost those jobs, it devastated families, including my own. So job creation, job protection is in my heart. And so I always want you coming in here with a smile and we will always work with you, at least as long as I'm sitting here, we will work with you to try to figure out what we can do to, to, so the families here don't have that moment. And so we'll try to get you next time. And we hope Odin goes really well and expands up here and other things. But for Miss Pearl, she's had to hear that a million times. That is so important to diversify our workforce in any way we can beyond just what's at the sample gates or elsewhere. And I know that she's going after that with 
uh, with all due uh, speed, and I'm, I'm just grateful. Any other counselors? Councilor Hawk. Uh, yes, uh, opportunity to speak to Ms. Pearl. Uh, uh, Councilmember Deckard was speaking of some of his background, some of his memories. My background, as you might know, is in the construction in industry. That's what my family, that's why I was raised in the construction industry and the home builders. And I uh, started out being a realtor in the 1970s. And so I really, really respect uh, the kind of jobs that come when we have other growth and that allows our home builders and our uh, workforce to have more opportunities. And so uh, that's a loss to them as well. Uh, so we're hoping that something else good will come along so that we'll keep those construction people busy and all those suppliers uh, building that workforce housing. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Hawk. With that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again here both of you, of course, on, uh, on a brighter day. But we thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm gonna move to public comment for items that are not on the agenda. So for members of the public, if you wish to make a comment on an item not presently on our agenda, you may come forward and do so now. In the NATU Hill, that means just simply coming forward. And for those on Teams, you just raise your hand and we will get to you. And come on forward. Mr. Matt Caldy. Welcome. Um, all right, uh, I wanna approach this as respectfully as I can because I appreciate the work that everyone is doing to move us forward on the path towards a new jail. Um, I've read enough to know that new jails are often considerably larger than the ones they replace, um, not just because of an increase in beds, but due to modern safety improvements, better services, increases in programming, and flexibility of operations. But the recent jail feasibility study recommends two pods accommodating 250 to 280 beds each, configured to expand to four pods if needed, set on at least 20 acres of land. This means 500 to 560 beds with the possibility of accommodating 10,000 to 1,000 to 1,120 in the distant future on a piece of land that would be difficult to put anywhere near existing services. The way I see it, this doesn't align with our values. The study's suggestion of 512 beds comes from averaging the number of beds per 1,000 residents in seven Indiana counties, multiplying that by Monroe County's 140,000 residents and adding a classification factor at 20%. I find the figure 512 to be unacceptable. Our current capacity is listed at 294, and I challenge our community to call for a more humane, safe, and efficient jail without increasing that figure. I realize that asking for a new design and plan may mean slowing the project down, but this is not just letting perfect be the enemy of good. Uh, we need a justice center that reflects our ideals, not one that keeps pace with the trends of other counties who may not aspire to the standards of justice that our community holds. Please use your platform to improve upon this proposal. I believe we can do better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colby. Good to see you in the Nat Hill. Other members of the public wishing to make a comment on items not on the agenda, raise your hand in teams or come forward in the Nat Hill. I always want to say this, and I'll say it again. All members of the public always welcome to make a comment here in the Nat U Hill or on Teams. And if that doesn't work for you, you can email any of these counselors. Uh, their addresses are on our website. So I always like to note that as well. It might be a little easier, whatever works. Plus, there's lots of events out there where folks will be at. All right, seeing no more public comment, we're going to move away from public comment into department updates. And I know the building commissioner had mentioned that he had an update. So come on forward. Thank you. Good evening, counselors. Um, here tonight um, to just ask you to start consideration of uh, potentially moving the building department to a 40 hour a week 
uh, schedule. Um, we are in the process of creating the documentation and will request, um, request a, a formal time on the May 28th agenda to discuss this further with you here tonight to make sure that uh, we provide you the things that we need at that time. So. Anything else? I'll introduce you all to Mr. Kirk Sylvester. This is the Deputy Building Commissioner. Welcome. And, um, so the Thank you, everybody. Well, welcome, Mr. Sylvester. Okay. Any questions? I'm about. I'm happy to answer now. Uh, we will have more detailed information in a couple weeks. Sure. Councilors, did anyone have any questions at this point? Councilor Hawk. Uh, yes. As you recall, I did ask uh, when you came to PAC. Uh, whether or not you've been paying any overtime uh, or at what you were doing with comp time. Uh, and uh, I believe the response was that nearly every uh, payday that went by, your folks were really working more than their 35 hours. Uh, and so you're just keeping track of that. It, if I'm, am I repeating that correctly? That's correct. Um, we, we, we have not used any type of overtime uh, it's all handled through comp time right now. Uh, the four positions that we're talking about uh, on average uh, days worked without using benefit time, 74% uh, of the days uh, that we work are over the seven hour period. So um, that's kind of, uh, that's for the group. There are a little bit of fluctuation within the, that staff member, but uh, and within that's those that's part of the kind of thing we yeah. would look at as to whether or not we would want to go to 40 hours because mm -hmm. that's still an obligation of the county at, at some point in time uh, to make up for those different hours. So uh, you might want to put that down in writing to share to everybody on the council uh, what you told us at the PAC meeting. We can do that for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or sure. comments from councilors? Councilor Munson. I'm hoping that when you make a presentation to us that you will provide uh, an organization chart and, and a personnel uh, map. Sure. That would be great. Yeah, I think we already have that prepared. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Hi, you do. Any Thank other you. counselors? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. Good to see you. Any other departments wishing to make an update? Uh, on teams as well, whatever works. Chief Deputy Parker, come on up. All right. Good to have you with us. All right, so we're not pests then. <laughs> Never a pest. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, we'll we'll be very quick. Uh, just just a couple things. I know you like to hear about uh, personnel updates, so. Um, this, this one I'm going to tell you, is, uh, I think was pretty startling, but I think when you hear this, uh, you can probably reach around and give yourself a pat on the back here. We, we are going through our selection process for the mayor deputies. Uh, we currently have three vacancies to fill through that process. And we had a total of 40 applications come in for those positions, which historically, uh, since we've got here and tried to fill positions, uh, we were normally in the 10 or less range to fill positions. Of those 40 positions, 10 of those are law enforcement officers that are already law enforcement certified. So we've attracted 10 police officers from different jurisdictions that are looking at Monroe County of making that lateral transfer over here. That is huge for us. And I, you know, I, I think it's a combination of things, but none uh, even more than what you're about to talk about later on this agenda is that KSAs, that is, that's, that's resonating as we're, as we're attracting these quality applicants. So just a, a quick update on that, that shows that there's, there's fruits for that labor and it's very, very important. And we want to, we're very, very appreciative of it from the, from the sheriff's side. So I think the next time we come, you know, probably July-ish, we'll probably be able to tell you that we are now fully staffed on that side of the aisle, which hasn't been the case for a long, long time. Just to note, two of those uh, lateral positions are from out of state, one from Ohio and one from Illinois. So, you know, which they can test out and, and, and receive credit for their academies in their respective states. Um, 
So uh, very, very good news on that front. On the not so great news front, um, I just wanted to, uh, this is just information only, and, and we know what we have to do, but I wanted to give you uh, an update on our overtime uh, budgets, and I think we talked a little bit about this going into the eclipse and how that was going to how that was going to look. Um, so on the on the deputy side, um, with that and you know some other high profile law enforcement things that we've been involved in over the last few weeks, um, on the lit side of that, we've already we're, we've already spent eighty five percent of that overtime budget through lit. On the general side, we're at 63%. So what we're doing is we're, we're looking around at other accounts and we're, we're clawing that information in and Kim's been helpful uh, helping guide us through that. I just wanted to, to tell you that the, the situation that those two, those three events have put us in. On the jail side, it's not quite so bad. We're at, uh, our unexpended amount is 55% on, uh, on the lit side. No, it's County General, I'm sorry and uh, we're un, unexpended at 82% on the general side in the jail. So we're, we're a little better off there, but the, the, uh, the law enforcement side is you know, looking pretty dire, and so we may be looking to come back to you later on in the year. Um, really, I think um, that Kyle's gonna handle the, uh, the staffing stuff in the jail here. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, as of this moment, we are still fully staffed. Uh, we had two openings, uh, two transitions. One was hired by uh, Bloomington Police. One uh, transitioned to full-time on the merit side, and we slid part-time employees, fully trained, right into those full-time spots. So that worked out pretty well. Of the six transi transition spots, we've already hired four. Um, we're still working on hiring two more. Uh, we've got, I want to say, 11 at background check now. Sometimes, depending on the person, background checks take a little longer. Uh, ACH positions. We have hired two of the three, uh, one being reentry and one being a uh, QMHP, uh, quality mental health professional, uh, one of the social workers, essentially. Uh, so we're doing pretty well there. Um, Really, and this kind of echoes what, what the chief deputy said, it's really easy to attract applicants when the pay's up, when the morale's up, when the communication between different offices is up, and people, uh, people are definitely taking notice because we're hearing about it, like he said, from other states. So, thank you. Just for a point of clarification, when we talk about those four hired for the transition team, if you recall, make sure that, you know, at least the public is aware of this, I'm sure you are, but those are, those are the backfill positions that then will be selecting uh, experienced officers to actually go to the transition team. So we're two away from that. We've got a meeting scheduled uh, with Corey tomorrow. Uh, looks like that is spinning up very, very quickly. So I imagine the next time we come in, we'll have an update on the transition team itself and what that's looking like. And then, um, the remaining position there uh, through the through the uh, contract with Quality Healthcare is that um, the the position of um, substance abuse counselor. So that's the only remaining position that that is out there. So uh, two of the three there are they're going to be here probably probably about by the end of this month on station, you know, putting their services to work. So uh, we're really, really, really excited about that happening, and particularly the, the reentry coordinator. That was something that we've never had. We know the good work that is being done with our mental health professionals and just gonna be able to staff that up and make it more robust, but we're really interested to see how this reentry coordinator position is gonna work out for us. And then for the first time, we'll have a substance abuse counselor here that I would say will probably arrive sometime maybe mid-June is a is an estimate so uh lots of positive news coming out of the sheriff's office and and the and the jail on both sides so thank you <clears throat> questions or comments from counselors Councilor iverson it's so good to see you guys it's so good to hear good news we've worked together on this for months and months and months and credit goes to sheriff marte for having a vision and we're working together on that vision and getting this done so 
it, let's keep planning, let's keep working together, and let's keep making good progress in this community. I think the vision started in June of last year when, when the seven point plan came out and we've been chugging away at it ever since. And, you know, a credit to everybody involved, nobody let go of it. It just, it, you know, there was a lot of things that had to happen to make it happen. And, uh, you know, I, I think we all kind of pulled together and um, from everybody that was available to throw in on that did. So we, we really appreciate it. It's going to make a difference. We're not fast, but we're steady. <laughs> On that, <laughs> Councilor Cross. <laughs> like not fast. Yikes. Okay. Um, I was going to say, um, I know it's been a busy time for you all for the past several weeks, um, but a congratulatory goes into order for you all because you had um, a deputy that was recently nominated for a Valor Award. So I just wanted to say congratulations um, to you all for the work that you are doing and to that deputy as well. Thank you very much. Councilor Hawk. Uh, yes, I just want to say it's been such a joy working with the Sheriff's Department uh, because you have such a vision for the future and you want it, the public to know the good things that, that you're doing uh, here for the community. You're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it so the community have an opportunity to feel safer and and to know that uh, for the people who happen to be incarcerated, they're being treated with great respect and opportunities to hopefully get a bit better. And um, I think that's a part of the reason why it's easier to fill your slots, because you make this public, it's it's right there on boy that Facebook. There's nothing you're going to hide from Facebook, <laughs> and all of those pictures of how you've turned uh, around what was going on in the jails for its condition, and and how you've turned around just the attitude of people who want to serve in law enforcement. And I'm so grateful for that because there are many communities that cannot fill their slots. And it isn't just about pay. It's because they don't feel they're uh, respected or desired or, or appreciated. And so I just want you to know that the community really loves our law enforcement and we stand behind you and we are going to do what it takes to support you. So thank you. Thank you. Tell you a real funny story about that in about 60 seconds. And, and you're exactly right, uh, Councillor Hawk. Uh, it goes back to uh, about October of 2022 when Sheriff May Marte talked to me about taking this position. I remember him laying out his vision uh, and, and all the stuff that he wanted to accomplish. And you know, we talked for several, several hours about it. And I remember talking to my wife about it. I said, I don't know. I said, that, you know, Ruben's got a lot of stuff. And I didn't use that word. He wants to get done. And that, that's not going to be a fun job. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and then, so I called Kyle uh, once I decided. And Kyle said, man, I don't know. That sounds like a lot of stuff. And he didn't use that word. And <laughs> he was reluctant, too. <laughs> but the, the thing of it is, you know, when you got a guy that, that's that um, passionate about it, and is that forceful about it? And you know he's gonna do it with or without you. You can't help but say, I, I wanna be part of that. And that's what happened with, with Kyle and I, at least. <laughs> so <laughs> it just, uh, it, what you're saying is exactly true, that that, that started um, a, as he was, you know, gearing up to, to assume this office and it's carried through. And Kyle and I were both, we're both tired because of it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I gotta keep us moving. I do want to note, you all always take the calls and requests. The sheriff took one today, uh, and I always appreciate that. And I appreciate the transparency with which you do all this. Um, none of this is easy, but I the leadership is very evident, and and I appreciate it very much. All right. Any other departments wishing to make an update? Seeing none, I've got the auditor. <laughs> Marie Gregory. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Um, I have a FEMA update that's been a long time coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, years, actually. Yeah. So um, the original request that I submitted for closeout was $725,203. Um, we finally heard back, um, and after some back and forth, 
Um, some, el some items were deemed ineligible, and the final amount the county is going to receive is $415,597. So, I mean, although that is disappointing, it's not the full amount we, um, you know, submitted for reimbursement, there were some eligibility issues, and regardless, the county did very well. We maximized the amount of COVID funding available. We didn't leave anything on the table. We had all, we received all the CARES dollars allocated to us, and um, FEMA was just kind of an added bonus, and the eligibility requirements are a lot more stringent, so we will be receiving that, so they say, in 35 to 60 days. So, exciting right. news. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that back up. Thank you. Any questions for the other? All right. Thank you so much. Seeing none. Any other departments? All right. With that. We will go to uh, liaison updates. Counselors, any liaison updates that anyone wishes to make? Counselor Iverson. I have two. I'll start with substance use disorder updates. For those agencies in town, uh, in, in Monroe County, uh, that are interested in receiving substance use disorder settlement dollars or Monroe County departments uh, interested in receiving settlement, uh, substance use disorder settlement dollars, uh, on the county's website, co.monroe.in.us, under very important news, there is a link to an application for funding. Uh, the current round will go, will be taking applications until June 30th. So if you are an agency or you know of an agency that is working on substance use disorder treatment, uh, please go to that link. The second item that I'll share on substance use disorder is we ask that you save the date. Tuesday, September 5th, 2024. That's Tuesday, September 5th, 2024. We are bringing back the Opioid uh, Summit. Uh, we're calling this the 2024 Monroe County Recovery Summit, uh, and we're dedicating it to the work of Greg May. It will be at the convention center. We just talked to Marquise. It's gonna be a great event, uh, and we'll start getting invitations out to you all within the next couple of uh, a month or so here. Uh, more details can be uh, uh, heard at the SUDAC meeting, Substance Use Disorder Advisory Committee meeting, which is this Friday at noon. You can uh, either watch that on CATS or attend in person. The next uh, update that I'll bring is from JFAC. Uh, we are scheduled to bring our next update to council at our next meeting. So uh, next meeting there will be uh, an update and it will not involve me reading through a list as quick as I can. So that's the teaser. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Ivers. You're welcome. Councillor McKim. Yes, thank you. I wanted to give a brief report on the long-term finance committee meeting on April 26th. Uh, we went in detail through many recommendations that were in the sustainability revenue and spending plan from Financial Solutions Group. In particular, we were working from the version that was dated uh, April 24th, uh, 2024. There's a lot in that report, and we all need to make sure that we're comfortable with it and get any questions answered and changes made before we start planning for the budget in earnest. Uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of highlights from the discussion. First, with respect to the general fund, um, we find ourselves in a somewhat familiar position of having a very healthy cash balance, but also some areas of concern on the horizon. Uh, both on the, cash, uh, on the cash balance side, if we go back to our 4B that we generated this year's budget from, we had a projected end of 2023 cash balance in the general fund of $21.7 million. So that means we formulated our budget based on an assumption that we'd have $21.7 million at the end of 2023. But when we actually, when we look at our actual end of the year cash balance, we wound up with $25.6 million, almost $4 million more than we had projected. Um, the majority of that appears to have come from a combination of greater than expected reversions that means unspent appropriations, as well as greater than expected interest income. Uh, but on the flip side of this really great news regarding cash balance, we still have the uh, twin concerns of an expected reduction in interest revenue, both because of uh, reduced uh, rates and also because of uh, the 
because of us no longer having as, as much ARPA funding uh, in the bank to earn interest on, but also the substantial reduction in income tax starting as early as 2026, depending on the results of annexation litigation. And those two hits to revenue can very quickly turn us from cash positive to cash negative. And you can, you can look at the, um, the sustainability analysis from uh, FSG to kind of see how that plays out. Now, of course, that is just a... Uh, uh, you know, th th that analysis is just based on a number of assumptions, but you can still see how that, that positivity suddenly can become cash negative. Secondly, we discussed the rainy day fund. Um, although we have a healthy rainy day fund balance of over $7 million, we have in the past used it as a match for grants, such as the community corrections grant for pavement. Um, our financial consultant re recommends that as a matter of budgetary philosophy, we adopt a policy that calls for rainy day funds to be spent only as the very last dollars that we have available. So it is truly our rainy day savings account. That means we should look to other sources such as the general fund for grant matches. And in fact, we'll be considering a proposal later tonight to move the existing community corrections grant appropriation from rainy day to the general fund. We'll also want to see the Monroe County Code section dealing with the rainy day fund updated both to reflect this new philosophy, but also to modify some outdated language in the code. For example, some of that dealing with COET, which uh, of course no longer exists. And second, with respect to our rainy day fund balance, we currently have a balance of about $7.7 .7 million. However, our financial consultant recommends that for a budget of our size, we may wanna consider in increasing our rainy day balance to $10 million. Um, I think when we receive our supplemental lit distribution, we ought to use that as an opportunity to build up our balance to that of $10 million. So there's a lot more that we discussed and a lot more in the report, but I encourage everybody to read the report, at least the material at the beginning. And uh, if you're interested to watch the committee meeting uh, team's recording from April 26th. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKim. And one thing I wanted to note to councillors to consider, and Michelle and I have talked about this, uh, many councillors have expressed a lot of interest in long-term finance and on what's going on. And those meetings are extremely helpful and informative to, to what we do. One thing we've floated is the possibility, and I want you all to think about it, comment on it, and pass it to Michelle, the possibility of doing a uh, public notice that it is possible members may be there in a quorum to take that information uh, so that you all can benefit from that. A few of you have said the audio, the sound, the other deliverables are not kind of hitting what you need to, to be informed. If you have strong thoughts on that, let Michelle know, but it may be a way that it's you, you can come in on that typically Friday morning, get that information, and, and be on down the road uh, with that better informed. Councilor Hawk. I guess it'd be nice if we could have it in this room where we could hear one another and see the presentations mm -hmm. uh, so that everyone could sure. uh, participate and so forth. Um, but something I wanted to say in regards to uh, uh, part of the reasons, not, not nearly the reason, uh, why we ended up with a larger cash balance, but we have to remember what happened to our cash balance in 2023 was a lot having to do with what happened in 2022 when we put together our budgets and the 1782s. Now remember all of the budgets that are inside that frozen levy. And at the time there was the theory, and I understand the theory, to pull everything we could from everyone, every other budget that's in every other fund in the frozen levy, pull it over in county general. That ended up with it then. So then that's what happened for 2023. That then, because they pulled all this from the other funds so that they wouldn't have so much money, it put it into the general fund. Now here is a result of what happened, or we just saw this just in the last few days. While 2023 ended up with more cash for general, it left not enough cash for the assessor's office and some of the others for the reassessment portion. Because, for instance, with reassessment, when you go back and look at what they had ended up uh, and began the year, one year was like 700 some thousand, the next one went down to like 300 some thousand. Well, that may sound like you've got a lot of money, but remember, they're not getting income tax. So when they get that December settlement, the fall settlement, that has to carry them through until the, their June settlement. 
and because the amount that was reduced for their operating and their carry forward balance was reduced, they ended up short being able to, to cover their bills. Now there's going to be some movement of dollars and everybody's working on it, but we have to be very reticent of that because when we think, well, we're going to move money around, and remember, we didn't do it. We didn't, I mean, we were looking at the numbers, but it wasn't our decision. But I've been assured uh, by our new auditor that before we move forward with this and the finalized amount, when we're go working on these budgets, we will make sure we understand the result of what we're doing. And that's, that's part of my uh, liaison report. But I also wanted to get, could I move on to the other ones? Okay, for the treasurer, they were quite busy collecting money. Your money, folks, it is your money. Uh, I stopped by there, had a brief visit with some of the folks that were waiting to pay their taxes, really lovely people. Um, it didn't seem to be too unhappy. Okay, um, and then I, I wanted, to, and then I did say a little bit about the assessor's office because that was a grave concern to them about, oh my goodness, looks I've never been in a situation before when they were short the cash. Um, but uh, the other part was really talking with the sheriff's department to, to make sure that, that we, that they knew everything we do. If we've got information, we need to make, share and make sure they are aware as we go. So those are my reports and thank you. Thank you, Councilor Hawk. Councilor Munson. Talk about Harrisburg. That's right. <laughs> Councilor <laughs> Hawk just prompted me to do something different than I had planned. And I'm so glad she did because this Saturday, uh, our Friday evening and Saturday is Harrodsburg's Heritage Day Festival. And it's a good time had by all who go there. Uh, there's a parade, I think it's at two o'clock? Two o'clock. Two o'clock on Saturday. There's fireworks at 10 o'clock in the evening. Meanwhile, the afternoon, uh, there's a fish fry and um, the Lions Club of Kirksville is having uh, a sale of strawberry shortcake with real shortcakes and real strawberries. Um, and there's a carnival for kids, uh, music at the, at the uh, pavilion, a baby contest, and other great fun stuff. You can uh, find more details on the website. And I hope to see more folks there. It's it's very good time. The dynamics are going to be there. Oh, Marty. The dynamics. They are dynamite. Thanks for adding that. Yeah. So the other update I wish to give has to do with the Sophia Travis Grants Program. And uh, that the Grants Committee is meeting tomorrow to uh, put the final uh, approval on our schedule. But I'm going to tell you the tentative schedule because so many organizations, are not-for-profits in our county and city, are asking uh, what's going on? We have a schedule change. Uh, we will not be announcing the, uh, the schedule via email uh, this year because we ran into problems last year and some organizations were not notified. Uh, we're going to try to do a different email approach, but the, the way people will be notified is that there'll be a July 19th press release and then there will be uh, invitations to all to attend a kickoff meeting. So save the date for July 30th for that meeting. We'll hold it here in this room. Uh, briefly, the schedules are uh, August 1st for applications open, September 20th applications due, September 30th uh, applicant presentations again here in this room, October 29th. Uh, award presentations will be made by the County Council. And the week of December 9th, this is what everybody wants to know, the, uh, the winners of the grants will receive their checks from the county to help them carry out their mission for the following year. So I look forward to seeing many people here in this room on July 30th. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Munson. 
I think we got everyone on liaison reports that we're going to do it. So I'm going to move us on now to item number seven on the agenda, which is consent agenda items. Council, I move to approve the following consent agenda items for May 14th. The May 2nd, 2024 executive session summary minutes of the County Council and Board of Commissioners as presented. The probation department's request of the category transfer and funds 9145-0000 JDAI program and grant of $4,100 from the supplies category to the services category. The probation department's request of a category transfer and fund 9146-9624 JDAI performance grant of $400 from the services category to the supplies category. The highway's request of a category transfer and fund 1135-0000 cumulative bridge of $20,000 from the services category to the supplies category. And the highway's request of a category transfer and fund 1176-0000 motor vehicle highway of $50,000 from the personnel category to the supplies category. Thank second. You. Got a second. It was a tied second, but no favorites here. Are there any questions from council on the consent agenda items? Seeing none, uh, may we go, do I do public comment on this? Yeah, I absolutely do, why would I not? If you have a comment on any of the consent agenda items, you may come forward here in the NATU Hill or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, we will go to a roll call vote. Councilor Crossley. Yes. yes. Councilor Iverson. Yes. yes. Councilor Wiltz uh, is not present, sorry. <laughs> Councilor Munson. Yes. Councilor McKim. Yes. Councilor Hawk. Yes. Councilor Decker. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you very much. That takes us to item eight on our agenda, which is a request from the Waste Reduction District. Council, I move to approve that the council officially accept responsibility for post-closure care on behalf of the Monroe County Waste Reduction District pursuant to Indiana Administrative Code 329 IAC 10-39-3. Second. All right, I wanna welcome Mr. Tom McGlasson, our director of the Waste Reduction District. Yes, thank you. Uh, I have with me our landfill director, uh, Lee Polson. Um, I think that uh, I think we've all been through this at least once before uh, with uh, everybody that's up there. So uh, this is an annual demonstration that the state requires us to do on the closed uh, Monroe County landfill, uh, which is basically uh, using uh, so engineering estimates to determine uh, the remaining cost uh, to complete the 30 year post closure monitoring maintenance period of which we are in year 15. Um, so. Uh, uh, but the state does require uh, somebody to say the funds are available uh, to get through those uh, last 15 years of, of the post-closure uh, term. So um, the, the county has graciously um, put this demonstration up on behalf of the district uh, for uh, the past number of years. Uh, we're here again uh, requesting that we uh, continue that uh, for, for the coming year. So. Um, I uh, just w would note, I don't think it's clear in what was included in your packet, but uh, is in, I believe, on page 26 of your packet um, in, in the letter uh, that will need to be completed by the auditor's office. Uh, you'll note uh, that uh, the amount uh, for the demonstration this year is $2,346,123. Uh, that is about an $80,000 um, $80, decrease from what it was uh, last year. Uh, and again, nobody's expected to put that money up right now. Uh, and in, in all the years that we've done this, uh, the district has managed uh, uh, to, to fund the costs of maintaining uh, and monitoring that landfill through its operating budget, have, have not asked the county for any contributions uh, to this point and don't foresee that uh, you know, coming in the future. We believe we'll be able to continue uh, 
uh, to fund that. Uh, also, to, to that end, uh, you may recall that the district does have a trust fund in place uh, specific to uh, landfill monitoring and maintenance costs, uh, uh, the current balance of which is about $750,000. And we, of course, would, would exhaust that before ever coming to the county uh, to ask for any assistance. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Go to questions or comments from counselors. Councillor Munson. This is my 12th year hearing this. <laughs> and uh, we just count on the county to uh, take care of this uh, backup for the, for the solid waste district. So thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, with that, we'll go to public comment. If you have a comment here in the Nat U Hill, come forward to our table. If you are online and have a comment on Teams, raise your hand and we'll call on you. Seeing none, we will go to a roll call vote. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. McGlass. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Good to have you with us. We now are going to move to a special item added to this agenda, and I appreciate council and the public indulging us on this. We had a communication from uh, the Capital Improvement Board, which was a response to the uh, city's official uh, request regarding some of the uh, potential land around uh, the convention center, and a couple councilors had uh, offered that uh, they might have some thoughts on that. I wanna give counselors an opportunity to comment. I have a few of my own, but I'm gonna open it up. And Councillor Crossley, I've got you first on my list. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I think we all have been paying very much close attention to everything related to the Capital Improvement Board, also known as the CIB, and the conversation. Um, I haven't really spoken much about this and, and listening to everything I think I've kind of had um, an Oprah aha moment and a little bit of a boiling point for me. And I really hope that our city colleagues are really paying attention, in particular our city council colleagues, because we've all known that we've needed this convention center expansion for a really long time. We've already known that um, conversations have been having long before I was here. Um, on the council and some of us here too. But the thing that intrigues me the most and gives me a little bit of a pause um, to this is the, the touch and go and the, the stop and go of what we are responsible for, what should be done, how big this should be, um, uh, civic center conversations. And I just wanna have a pause for a second. And I just kinda wanna remind us what the purpose of the Capital Improvement Board is. Um, the purpose of the Capital Improvement Board is to manage and direct the affairs of the Convention Center and its expansion. A Capital Improvement Board, CIB, hereby created, um, is to direct the affairs and to manage the affairs of the Monroe County Convention Center and its expansion. The duties of the CIB um, is to select the site for the expansion center and the components included a site plan, select and contract with the operation and management organizations, oversee process for partner selection, name the expanded center, hire, retain, support staff, and the need for additional amenities, including a parking garage. Now I'll say all that to say, um, now I feel like I say this in every meeting, so it's no surprise to my colleagues what I would about to say. Um, we all have our particular lanes, um, in which we are driven in. And do those lanes intersect? Absolutely. But we also have um, CIB members that all of us, each body, have allowed, we've picked, we have appointed, and they are serving. And I would hope that we give the CIB their responsibility and their faith um, and knowing what they need to do, what we've asked to do, um, because last year we also saw 
how we had state legislators that said Monroe County needs dad to come in to take care of um, us. <laughs> I can tell you, I think the state legislators have some other things that they can be working on, but that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But in order to keep our proverbial parents away, we need to make sure that we are doing our job, staying in our lanes, allowing the CIB to do what it is that they need to do um, so that we can get this going. It is no surprise that we've continued to have conversations um, with, I, I talked to Talisha Coppock this afternoon. We all got emails back from April explaining how the, how we have, Monroe County has not been able to have those conventions because we are just simply not big enough. And I, last thing that I really wanna say is with the recent conversations of what's happening with our local businesses, this convention center expansion will help tremendously. So we need not to put a, a pedal to the, to the brake and we need to put our pedal on the gas or our foot to the gas and continue to move forward because what we do with this convention center expansion will help or hurt um, our local businesses and we are starting to see what our restaurants are going through. Um, COVID hit us hard. We are trying to still bounce back, but some people are having a really hard time with that. And this is not the time to have conversations of shoulda, woulda, couldas. We have the CIB, we have them here. There's a reason for that. And let's just keep going forward. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Crosley. Incidentally, we do have a CIB member here. If you, uh, uh, Mr. Spoonmore, if you wanted to come forward and offer any comments that you might have, and then I'll go back to Councilor. Sorry for jumping around here a little bit. But we appreciate very much your service. Didn't know if you wanted to add anything to uh, the, the comments that CIB had already kind of issued. Well, good evening, Council. Eric Spoonmore, uh, your appointment to the uh, Monroe County Capital Improvement Board of Managers. Um, I appreciate Ms. Crosley's uh, remarks. Um, we had a, an executive session uh, on Monday this week, and uh, that was, and I wanted to give you an update on what came out of that. Um, right now, we're at this point where we're needing to make a decision on the direction of the expansion. And so the interlocal agreement that um, was signed by both the city and, and, and county uh, elected officials kind of outlined how we're going to determine that. And so we had to make a request to county government and a request to city government asking what parcels of property would be contributed to the project. Um, and that was, uh, we voted on that at our April 10th uh, Capital Improvement Board meeting. I think we got the letter out to both government units uh, within a day or two. And, and thanks so much to county government, to the council and the commissioners uh, for their very swift and speedy response to that request. So we got all of those parcels back. Um, and then I think on May 6th, we got the re response back from the, I think the letter that you're referencing from the city that was stating what parcels were available and which ones would require reimbursement of food and beverage tax dollars. So what we learned was the parcels to the north or what is uh, known as the Bunger Robertson properties were going to require um, uh, a reimbursement to the effect of uh, $7 million. Uh, this was the topic that was discussed at the executive session. So um, uh, the topic was, do we want to uh, go through that negotiation process and expense of food and beverage dollars to acquire that north property, which really wasn't ever a part of the original plan to begin with. It was purchased uh, by the uh, prior uh, mayoral administration in 2019, long after uh, the food and beverage tax was passed by the county council. So what came from that meeting was there was no desire from the Capital Improvement Board to enter into negotiations to purchase uh, or acquire the, um, the Bunger and Robertson property to the north. Um, so that would be ultimately a savings of $7 million to the Capital Improvement Board that could be put towards uh, the, the project. Now we just need to kind of determine, you know, what direction is it gonna go? There's, there's three other options. Uh, I think there's plenty of land available there. I don't wanna speculate right now is what that looks like, but there's an eastward option, there's a westward option, and a southward option that we're 
uh, kind of examining right now and pros and cons to all of that. Um, President John Weichart of the Capital Improvement Board has asked for a vote to be taken on that um, uh, direction uh, of the expansion at our next meeting in June. So we've got kind of a tight timeline to get all that sorted out, but we do hope to have that uh, determined by the June, I think it's June 12th meeting is when we'll, uh, we'll have that on our agenda. So that's just kind of an update on some uh, new developments that came from uh, the executive session the other day and just wanted you all to be aware of that and and formal notes I think you got uh, at least some of you were on the email uh, from our attorney uh, Jim Whitlatch uh, to city legal informing them of our decision to not pursue that and the nice thing about that is it gives the city the opportunity to uh, make some pretty quick decisions on what they want to do and how they want to dispose of that property if they want to um, but it won't be the capital improvement board that's that's pursuing it Thank you very much, Mr. Spinor. It's yep. always good to have you back here with us. Counselors, Councilor Hawk. I just want to say that we are so grateful, this community is, that we have uh, citizens who have said they want to serve on this Capital Improvement Board. We are so fortunate because the expertise there in the group that's come together, is it, they're stellar. And, and so we must, uh, know that they have the heart of this community and the and the best they want the best for this community uh, and they also have pledged that they're going to be uh, keeping a watchful eye on the dollars and and what this is going to cost and so forth so I appreciate all that you're doing and the fact that you're keeping this council um, apprised of what's going on and thank you for your service thank you council McKim yeah, thank you very much. I do want to echo um, both uh, Councillor Hawk and um, uh, Councillor Crossley's uh, comments. I ap particularly appreciate Councillor Crossley's comments on the role of the CIB. I think she said it uh, very passionately and far better than than I could. Um, I do also uh, just just kind of want to call attention to a comment that Mr. Spoonmore made. Uh, which was that the um, the north option, the Bunger property, was never part of the initial concept for convention center expansion. The former mayor made that purchase without, or or I, you know, di directed that purchase, or or essentially made that purchase without the involvement or notice or discussion with any of the stakeholders of the of the convention center. We it was never planned to go to go north. We will do just fine uh, with the other three options. Um, I have my own personal preferences, but I leave it in the capable hands of the CIB to uh, uh, to make that decision. But um, the, in, in particular, I, I completely respect the position of the current mayor and the current city council that they are not interested in uh, donating that property. I fully support that uh, that decision, and I also uh, fully support uh, any decision to not uh, use food and beverage tax to pay for that pay for that property. I think we have other options that have already been acquired for the purpose of convention center expansion. Um, I think the the city uh, the, the the new administration uh, has has priorities, and uh, I uh, encourage her to uh, uh, to continue to um, pursue those priorities. So thank you very much for your work, Mr. Spoonmore. And yes, I encourage the CIB to not recommend uh, food and beverage tax be uh, be spent on on the bunker property. Thank you, Councillor Munson. Thank you for coming tonight, Mr. Spoonmore, and I hope I hope the CIB will continue to give us updates. I started in I think it was about 2016 to um, work with various uh, people on the concept of an expansion for the convention center, and our first uh, agreement about moving forward with this was. How do we organize this? Who's going to actually handle the, the decision making, et cetera, et cetera? And we didn't know a structure, but we did our research and we identified that it was a capital improvement board and hence 
here you are. <laughs> I thank the, uh, the, the board for their decision to move ahead without uh, spending food and beverage uh, tax revenue uh, for the North property because that would be a significant impact on your budget for the actual expansion construction. So thanks to all of you for your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Iverson. I had two things to say that I don't think uh, will repeat what my colleagues have said. And the first thing is I appreciate the timeline. Uh, the thing I've heard from the community was we need to get this done. Get done. We are, we're losing business. We're losing visitors. Tourism is an important, important industry to our community. So I appreciate the ambitious timeline. The second thing that I want to raise is I appreciate the leadership of this council. Uh, we have been kept in the loop. We have been made known about all the developments. So uh, Mr. Deckard, Ms. Crosley, thank you so much for your leadership on this issue and for uh, making sure that the council is aware of all the developments as they happen. Thank you very much. I'll make some final comments here and then we will let Mr. Spoonborg get back to working on that convention center. Um, I, I was having a conversation with Chancellor Weikart on Monday and I wanna to add to the comments, we have a stellar uh, CIB, I don't know how we conned them, uh, recruited them all to do it, but <laughs> they're awesome. And every one of these bodies is represented with representatives on there, including, I mean, we're looking literally at our representative who incidentally was a former president of this council and had to sit in this very chair. We've got that covered. And as I was listening to Chancellor Weikart talk about kind of here's, you know, what we're thinking and s some potential steps, I thought this is doing precisely what it was designed to do. They are moving quickly because Indianapolis, the legislature is watching very, very closely. And there's good days on there, up there, and there's sometimes not good days up there when they look at us. Sometimes they just like Lisa Ridge, and sometimes they like a few more of us. I want to keep that process moving and happy. What's more, I want to do it because the jobs that Councilor Crossley was talking about are important. And again, this is the second time jobs have come up in this meeting. We can never be a community that forgets about jobs. And as a waiter that was working in downtown Indianapolis, living on convention traffic that came through the Weston and stayed at, ate at Shula's where I was a waiter, <laughs> I fought off many an, an eviction and many other bad things through my convention traffic. Now, I'm not saying everything that's going to come through there is that, but we have a good headache here and that people want to be in this community either to live or to visit. And we got to hug that every chance we get. This convention center is a chance to do it. So I do respect where the, the city's coming from on this. This just doesn't sound like it's the avenue for that. So again, thanks to the CIB. Yeah. Ms. Turner King has got a comment. Yes, in the spirit of keeping the council in the loop, I did want to mention, um, and it seems like a good time now since we're talking about the CIB, that last Thursday I attended a special session of the city council. Um, and after an hour discussion, the city council decided that they will be drafting a letter to the CIB um, that outlines some city direction, that which will include city direction. But they also mentioned that they will be providing a copy of the letter to the com other governing bodies, so the county council and the um, county commissioners for input on things that are not under city code. So not so much how tall the building can be, but what is the vision for a civic center? So I wanted to put that on your radar because that should be forthcoming. Thank you, Ms. Turner King, and thanks for going to those meetings. Yeah, thanks, Ms. Turner King, for, for making that point. We're, we're looking forward to um, receiving that missive from uh, the city council. Um, and we'll uh, we'll coordinate on you know as, as much of that as we possibly can. But really, I just want to say thanks to each of you. You you have all been extraordinary partners. The county commissioners have been extraordinary partners. Really, um, uh, all elected officials have been uh, just just great to work with on this project. I know things don't uh, move as quickly as we would like them to sometimes, but I got to tell you, I think that we have achieved more progress on this project than we have seen in years and years. And so let's keep the momentum going. There's a lot of moving parts to this with all the various elected units and, and folks involved, but um, let me know how I can help going forward. I do plan to you know, come back and get more regular updates on these items as well too. But if you guys ever need anything, just let me know, happy to help in any way. Thank you so much. Good to have you here. 
All right, counselors, thanks for having that special item. We're going to move on to item number nine. This is a request from the probation office. Council, I move to approve the probation department's request for an additional appropriation and fund 1000-0226 general fund probation of $7,681 in the personnel category. Second. Thank you. We want to welcome Ms. Linda Brady. Thanks for waiting Thank through all of our stuff. No problem. Thank you, Linda Brady, Chief Probation Officer. Um, I did want to thank you all for the consent agenda. The Whoever came up with that idea, brilliant. And we department heads love it because it's not wasting time to talk Absolutely. about things that are <laughs> yep. don't need a lot of talking. Yep. So thank you for that. Um, I was before you a couple of weeks ago and asked for a salary ordinance change for to be able to pay Troy Hatfield, my former deputy chief probation officer, at an hourly rate. And I told you I'd be back for an appropriation, and here I am. Um, our request is to be able to continue to contract, not contract, that Troy would stay on part-time uh, for up to 160 hours max between now and the end of the year to help train Anthony uh, Williams, who is the new Deputy Chief Probation Officer, as well as to help uh, train Melissa, our office administrator, about uh, how we deal with the claims process now. Um, we have 23 different budgets that we have. When a claim comes in, Melissa's got to figure out from all the budgets where does a claim go. It used to be Troy would just tell her. And we're finding a lot of things. Troy just did a lot of things he just took on, which was wonderful <laughs> that he did that. But we've got to spread that uh, knowledge out on so that we can all learn how <laughs> to do that. <laughs> And so this is a request to be able to retain him between now and uh, the end of the year for no more than 160 hours. So okay. any other questions? Yeah, counselors, what questions do you have? It, if I be, um, I did get a phone call from Judge Decoff this afternoon who um, apologized for not being able to be here tonight due to a prior commitment, but she did want me to advise the council that she is in support of this request, and that would be very beneficial for the probation department. Thank you very much, Ms. Turner King. Thank you. Always appreciate hearing from Judge Decoff. Counselors, anything else? Jeff, Counselor McKim. I guess I will just say that I think uh, we should do anything we can to uh, take advantage of any hours that uh, that uh, Mr. Hatfield is willing to give us before completely transitioning to his new job. So I'm certainly in support of this. Thank you. I, I'd add to that and say you all wrote the textbook on half this stuff, and I know that uh, we, we need to capture as much of that from all of you that we can with the good of the, the folks in this community. All right, we'll go to public comment. If you have public comments, come forward in the NATU Hill or raise your hand on Teams and we'll recognize you. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks for the feedback on the, the uh, consent agenda. We're always looking for that. We'll go to item number 10. This is a request from the Jail Correctional Center. And I know that the Sheriff, Sheriff Marte is here, Chief Deputy Parker, and staff. Council, I move to open for discussion and approval to amend the 2024 salary ordinance, adding two additional corrections officers, account lines, 10697 and 10698 and fund 1000-0380 general fund jail and in fund 1170-0380 public safety lit jail. Second. Thank you very much. We want to welcome uh, Sheriff Marte and Chief Deputy Parker back to the council room. Thank you for coming in uh, to talk to us about this. Sheriff, I'll turn it to you. Good evening, Council. This is pretty much is straightforward. So pretty much we're here just to answer your questions of any, any of us. And, but I think uh, uh, it's straightforward for us. All right. 
counselors, I will go to you next for any questions or comments regarding the request. Councilor Hawk. Um, yes, um, get my glasses so I'll make sure I'm talking about the right one. Um, this is, uh, we're trying to decide which fund it should come from. That's part of what this discussion's sure. about. Correct. Yes, and, and, and so there is a there is a the motion offered uh, a sample based on what staff had looked at for available funds. So she can comment on that, at, right. and it's open okay. for variation as well. Oh well, you have a copy of the script which I don't have. Yeah. Uh, regardless, issue. I'll just share my opinion. Sure. Uh, because we know that the. Uh, point of this is that you might be moving people around. I think that we should take this out of the general fund. We know that we have a heavy cash balance in the general, which will give us until budget time when we're <laughs> planning next year to review the other funds to see where we are. Now, I don't know what the su other suggestion was, but since I think I have the best suggestion, I hope that's what we're going to do. Uh, do is that what the suggestion was? Uh, the suggestion under the motion read by Councillor Crossley was two of these positions uh, under general fund and two under public safety. But it, again, it's open for discussion and amendment by Council. I see Councillor McKim has his hand raised if you want to yield on to him. Oh, actually, uh, <clears throat> okay, so part of, part of this was trying to make sure I heard correctly because it was different from what was on the agenda. I guess my inclination would be to support uh, uh, take, taking all three, all four out of the general fund, just because there is such a higher, uh, high cash balance and I think there's more flexibility there. Is, does anybody really object to that? Is there any reason why uh, any of you object to just putting all four in the general fund? I've heard two counselors say it, and I'll take that as potentially a friendly amendment to Councillor Crossley's original. Do you so, want you well, want to offer that, well, Councillor Hawk? Uh, did he just make the motion? I'll second it. He he's he agrees with your sentiment, so oh, I didn't yeah. want it. So why don't you okay? Why don't you make I, the motion? Yeah. I'll second. You want me to make the motion? I, I move that we uh, mm -hmm. place all of these positions uh, in the general fund. Um, at least for this second. year. Okay. We've second. got a motion. That's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Discussion on the amendment. Council Munson. Let's get her done. Council Munson summed it up. Anyone else? <laughs> and I, and, and talk talk okay. on your amendment. The other thing is that what could happen is because the plan was that you know, they might have to move around some hours or whatever. Well, you don't want to have payroll trying to figure out how many hours in one fund, how many, each payroll could be different. It's just, I don't know why we wouldn't just try to keep them all in the same fund. All right, so we've got this amendment. Let's go ahead and take a voice, can I voice vote? No. No, because we got a remote. All right, let's do a roll call on the amendment. Amendment. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Amendment passed six to zero. All right, amendment's been agreed to. The underlying request here, comments on that, <laughs> councillors. I just, I wanna offer, I appreciate very much the sheriff, as I said in earlier comments, the sheriff coming in uh, whenever we've asked him to come in on various things and being very transparent and talking us, to us about this, uh, he always takes my calls and I always appreciate that. And not only that, I do want to add this. I have personally witnessed as the sheriff takes calls from anybody in this county, doesn't mean if, if you're in office, out of office, and handles that. And people always comment to me, wow, that's awesome. And I, I, I look, we, had, we have some things here and we're moving to to, to, to get into some things to address uh, all, all manner of things that need to be addressed. So I appreciate that very much. Other comments from council? All right, seeing none, we will go to a final roll call vote on the underlying motion. Oh, pardon me, I'm gonna stop right there. Comments from the public. If you have a comment, <laughs> come forward in the Nat U Hill 
or simply raise your hand on Teams. I think Mr. Chris Askins, has a comment. Do you have a comment? Come on up here. We'll make room. <laughs> Welcome. Good evening, counselors. Um, my name is Dave Vaskins with B-Square Bulletin. Um, you covered, I think, pretty well the source of the funding for the positions. What I'm not quite clear on is why the positions are being added, and I don't know what to write for B-Square readers as to the answer to that question. And it's quite possible that I've missed it because I've been trying to focus on the enhanced semiconductor news that broke. Mm -hmm. um, so apologies if that's in the packet or if it was a part of the discussion that I missed, but I would appreciate it if that could maybe be reiterated with a sentence or two. Yeah. Thanks so much. I'd be happy to offer that on behalf of the counselors. Right. I, I, yes, I think it's very important that uh, the sheriff or whomever make it clear that a couple of these are for transports and the number of transports uh, that has happened. And and so that's an important situation. And yes, I'm, yes. I think the public needs to hear uh, about the, the need for the transport. Let, let me let me offer the following. And I think this will address what Mr. Askins is, is, is seeking here. On 5224, Council and Board of Commissioners had an executive session to discuss security system needs. And based on information received during that session, uh, the department uh, from the sheriff has requested the creation of the account lines that are in the underlying motion and a budget determined by council to and as well as amendments to salary ordinance to respond to those security needs that have been identified in that discussion. Um, I think that probably addresses that. Okay. Okay. You're very welcome and thank you, Mr. Askins, for covering us. All right. We will now go. I did public any other public comment, I should say. You didn't discuss the transport. We will now go to uh, seeing no public comment, a roll call on the underlying motion. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. We have also item D from the sheriff. Oh, that is the, sorry, I, I lost the sauce. Um, council, I move to approve the sheriff's request to amend the corrections officer job description to incorporate security needs and to update the age requirement. These amendments do not require a classification review. Second. 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 And Sheriff, we have uh, the job descriptions, I believe, that have been sent to you by our folks. And any comments you wish to make on any of that? No, we really appreciate the assistance that have been provided to us. Um, uh, Kim has been very helpful with that. So I, I, I really appreciate the assistance that was provided to us. So it, it made it easier for us to really move forward. So thank you. Sir. Okay. Questions or comments from council? Seeing none, I'll go to questions, comments, or qu comments from the public. Uh, those in the public raise come forward the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, on this motion to amend these job descriptions as, as has been identified, let's go ahead and go to a roll call vote. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you very much, Sheriff and Chief Deputy Parker. We appreciate very much you coming in and making lots of time for all this. And thank you for making it very uh, smooth for us as well. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, sir. Takes us to item 11 on the agenda and the highway department. 
Council, Council I move to approve the highway's request of a fund to fund transfer of cash from fund 1169-0000 local road and street in the amount of $350,000 to fund 8161-0000 sample road phase one. Second. Second. Welcome, Miss Lisa Rich. Good to have you back. Mr. Turner, good to have you as well. Turn it to you. Anything. <clears throat> so our sample road is a federal aid project. The project has been completed. Um, however, uh, we still have some ongoing um, change orders that's under discussion. So. Um, but we have to bring our cash balance to zero in our grant funds. Um, that project is funded from the local road and street fund. So this is the first of a transfer from cash to cash, and there most likely will be more. So um, that's why I've kind of built up the local road and street cash balance to be able to transfer over and pay for these projects. Any comments or questions from council? I just appreciate every time I see that truck out there cleaning, getting the road ready for some of the paving that you're working on, uh, that you did some prep work before you started filling all those major potholes that we're falling into. Uh, I appreciate the highway department. We rely on that highway department every day and don't even recognize it. We just assume you're going to be there to fix it. So, uh, and I know that you're spending a lot of your hours trying to make sure that you've got the money to move around, to grab whatever you can, and try to get these roads in the best position it can be for the people of this county. And as noted earlier, your success rate at going to Indianapolis and bringing dollars home is huge, and it's so appreciated, and we're glad those dollars are here, so thank you. Any other questions, comments from council? Let's go to comments from the public. If you have a comment in the public, raise your hand on Teams or come forward in the Nat U Hill. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. That takes us to item B. Council, I move to approve the highways, highway department's request for a new account line 37411 construction and fund 9174-0000 Lake and River Enhancement Pro and to simultaneously approve an additional appropriation in the amount of $27,650 in the services category. Second. 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 I, I think this is kind of fun. All right, we've got a motion and a second, Ms. Rich. Uh, so our actually our MS4 coordinator submitted this to DNR. It's also known as a layer grant. Um, the application was awarded $25,000 towards the $32,200 project cost, uh, which is approximately 77% of the cost of the project. Um, the county portion out of stormwater would be $2,650. Um, remainder um, to be paid is $4,550. Um, if the Soil and Water Conservation District approves to provide the property owner assistance for this, um, that'll be up to their board. Otherwise, it'll be up to the property owner to, for the one project. The other one is a county-owned project. Okay. Cool. I have a question about questions or comments from council. When, when the public sees cleaning up log jams, that means cleaning up things that create floods, is that? Correct, and when you have the backup, then it creates backup flooding, of course. Yeah, and that's one thing that I have been talking a lot about folks, and one thing, doesn't matter who you are in this county, people get that term flooding, because we're literally right here in this room, uh, sitting in the middle of the town and what's a giant cereal bowl, and it floods, we know that, there's a big dig that's going on that our city folks are doing, but anywhere in this county, we get flooding because of our soil, anything. So when I see stuff like that, this, I love to see that because mm -hmm. floods are devastating and they affect literally everybody in this community. So thank you. Any other questions, comments? I just want to comment that's that right. about the log jam, and I don't know whether uh, what you did to help there 
in Forest Park that might be part of what you've already been working on, that across the street from me is one of the major drainage ways of that whole entire area. Um, and it doesn't take much for <coughs> trees to you know, get right down in there and it just backs up that huge, huge culvert. And of course I get the benefit of that. I am losing my mailbox post because of it. <laughs> but I appreciate the fact that you folks will come and do what you can to try to get that water moving where it's supposed to go. Uh, so and unless you're in one of the lower areas, you might not appreciate that so much. You know, some of the other counties who do not want to support some of our issues having to do with stormwater and how the dollars should be used, that's because they're, you know, northern counties where they're flat and they don't have this kind of problem. We have the beauty of hills and dales, and we also have the problem of hills and dales. Council Iverson. It is my understanding that a stormwater ordinance update is coming later in June. Do I understand that correctly? Yes. Um, <laughs> so it was actually um, was on the agenda this morning for the drainage board. We had a drainage board and stormwater board um, joint meeting this morning. It'll also be, it's on the agenda for tomorrow, um, stormwater regular meeting, and it is tentatively set to be passed June 5th at the uh, commissioner's meeting. Um, we have a deadline, I believe it's July 1st. Um, this results, and it needed updated due to the IDEM change of changing the rule five to the um, general permit. So this is to get Monroe County in compliance with that. Um, there'll be some changes the way the you know, the property owners go through the permitting process, through building, planning, um, and now we'll involve stormwater um, fee for um, review. And uh, so, yeah, it'll take us a little bit to implement everything, get it going, but it is scheduled for June 5th for to be presented to the commissioners. Um, I believe the week before that, it'll be on the work session to go over sure. the plan and then uh, bring it to a regular session. So if you're interested in hills and dales and soup bowls, pay attention to this ordinance. Well, if flooding is just huge, yep. and everybody in this county talks about it. Yep. All right, let's go to public comment, correct? Public comment on this item, you can come forward in the Nat U Hill or raise your hand in Teams. Come on forward. If you wanna maybe jump in one of these, welcome. I wanted to acknowledge on behalf of the Monroe County Soil and Water Conservation, Conservation District Board that we did approve that uh, the funds be um, allocated for the um, support of that layer of project. Can you please state your name for the record? Oh, uh, thank you, Kim. Uh, Whitney Schlegel. Schlegel, we appreciate it. All right, any other comments from the public? Raise your hand on teams or come forward in the Nat U Hill. All right, seeing none. Uh, let's go to a roll call vote. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Councillor Crossley. Yes. Councillor Decker. Yes. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor McKim. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. All right. That takes us to item C. Council, I move to approve the highway department's request for a fund to fund transfer of cash fund 1197-0000 mm -hmm. stormwater management in the amount of $2,650 to fund 9174-0000 lake and river enhancement pro. Need a second. Second. All right. And Ms. Ridge, back to you. This is the cash to transfer into the grant for our, our match. Any comments, questions from council? Seeing none, we'll go to uh, comments from the public. Come forward here in the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councilor Crossley? Yes. yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Decker? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. That takes us to item D. 
Council, Council, I move to approve the Highway Department's request for an additional appropriation in the amount of $400,000 in Fund 1176-0000 Motor Vehicle Highway. All right. Second. It's got a second. Ms. Rich. Um, this is additional funds to put into our paving line. Uh, we've got another outside of the community crossing grant that you provide the match for. This is for our other list that we bid out. It is currently out to bid. Um, and I believe we opened those on May 22nd um, to try and get those awarded and get those and uh, completed in 2024 also. Questions or comments from council? Councilor Iverson. How many miles are we gonna do this year? Right now, uh, if we can make it all work, it's around 46 to 50 miles again. Okay. And that's at a huge dollar amount, but we're, we're trying to do that again this year. Is that correct? 46 to 50? A yeah. lot. About 46 miles. Yeah. A lot. I meant to ask you this a long time ago when this kind of came up. Do you think historically you're doing more than anyone's done? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Yes. And Abs this absolutely. The crews out there are work nonstop. Um, we do it a different method. Um, I'm not trying to put any previous uh, management down or for their process. We just do it a little bit differently of addressing the drainage, getting the roads ready, um, doing the ditching work. That's why we have three gradles at this point. Um, and then that just helps for the longevity. We Absolutely. moved into preventive maintenance of crack sealing the roads. That's another avenue to help prevent it. Uh, we've moved into adding shoulder stone after we pave a road. Um, so we just do things, hopefully a lot, a, a little bit more advanced to today's um, technology to help the roads with longevity. Uh, we, we can never satisfy all the needs that are out there. And uh, we still have a lot of roads that need a lot of attention, but we can just only do so much and that's what we do. And again, the dollars that you go after and you get are massive in all this. The taxpayers in this county could not and would not be able to do this on their own. So thank you. I couldn't do it on my own without everybody in the highway department for sure. Thank you. Thank you. It's awesome. All right. Any other comments, questions from council? Let's go to public comment on the item. Come forward in the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on team. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. And that takes us to item E. Councilors, I do want to note before uh, Ms. Crossley re reads this motion that after G, I'm going to give a, a a uh, seven minute stretch just for folks, and then we'll come back together. All right. Council, I move to approve the highway department's request for an additional appropriation in the amount of $500,000 in fund 1169-0000 local road and street. Second. Okay. Ms. Ridge. This is just to help with paving again. So it's just taking money from our cash and putting it into our bituminous line. Okay. Questions, comments from council? Seeing none, we'll go to comments, question or comments from the public. If you have any, raise your hand on teams or come forward in the Nat U Hill. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. Thank you. That's item F next. Council, I move to approve the highway department's request for the deappropriation of account line 23400 bituminous, 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 bituminous <laughs> in the amount of $1,500,000 in fund 1186 0000 rainy day. Second. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Rich. Um, I believe this originated at your FSG Finance Committee and it was um, uh, recommended to move this from the rainy day into the general fund. And I believe that's the steps to deappropriate that and then 
um, item F or G is to put it into the general fund. Okay, so money management here. Any other comments or questions from counselors on that? Councilor McKim. Only that this is uh, that this ties back to the uh, report that I've given from the long range uh, or long term finance committee that this is uh, reflects a, a philosophy of uh, use of the rainy day really as a as the last dollar savings account. And to be clear, we are not turning our back on paving on this, Councilor Hawk. Yes, I would just like to note that no matter what fund this comes out of, wherever we take it. This council wants to support you to make sure that you get the matching dollars that you need to get as many miles paved as we possibly can get. It would be crazy of us to turn our backs on, mm -hmm. on this, these dollars coming from the state, and we don't know how long that program is going to go on. So kudos to you and your team for making sure we got every bit of it that we can get. Thank you. Good. We appreciate you providing the match. Um, as you can see from the dollars that we try and pull from the other resources, um, we wouldn't be able to accomplish what we uh, do today. Um, I know it's the MBH ca calculations, I believe, um, at the State House is all gonna change next year. I'm not sure how that's gonna affect everything. Not sure how long the Community Crossings grant will, will stay in place. Next year could be a whole new picture for the MBH fund. It's just an unknown for everybody. Oh, yes, Councilor Iverson. And to that point, we were just made aware, I think today or, or this week about the summer study committees and the legislature. That's something to keep our eye on. Absolutely. Um, yeah, if it goes down, that's, I'm not sure how they're gonna change the calculation. It has, I, to my knowledge, it has not been changed since I've been here, so. Yeah. yeah. I, I just add this, this pro, the program, and again, you going after those dollars and Indianapolis smiling fortunately upon us in, in that process is just absolutely huge. Uh, I personally believe this program is made more bipartisan goodwill where it's needed and people don't care about partisan or bipartisan. They just want things paved. And I've got more comments from people on the work in the last couple of years or so particularly and they notice it and they see it. So uh, my heavens, I hope this doesn't change, but uh, I don't know how long you can stay as lucky as you have been in, in pulling this off and doing the hard work. So thank you. Any other comments, questions from council? We'll throw it to the public. Any comments or questions on this item, come forward in the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councilor Crossley. Yes. Councilor Deckard. Yes. Councilor Hawk. Yes. Councilor Munson. Yes. Councilor Iverson. Yes. Councilor McKim. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. And now we have the matching G. Council, I move to approve the highway department's request for, an, for a new account line 23402 by two minutes CC grant and fund 1000 dash 0530 general fund highway and to simultaneously approve an additional appropriation and the amount of one million five hundred one million five hundred thousand dollars in the supplies category second a motion and a second miss ridge <laughs> you're like this is the sequel to the this last is, movie right? pretty well self-explanatory <laughs> she got it i I would like to just state that this is general fund. General fund is a multi-user. And so uh, the highway department has been given their own location for general fund. So uh -huh. that's why there is an extension of 0530. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments from council? Council Rock? Just that uh, for years and years, we were told, and I, Maybe we just believed it because people told us that and we didn't really go look at the legislation. Um, that was back when we did that kind of thing. Just, we just believed what anybody told us. Uh, but we were told we weren't allowed to use general fund money uh, for uses for the highway. And so maybe this is the way everyone does it simply because so much of the general fund money is income tax money, and we know some counties use almost all of their income tax revenue, oh, you know, like where Carmel is, 
for the roads and streets and so forth. So I'm sure that changed, that legislation changed along the way, or maybe that was just what we were convinced of back then. But how it works, as long as we get you your money. If we wait long enough, we may see it change again. Any <laughs> other? That's Ms. Ridge's smile, and that's the key. <laughs> Any questions, comments? Seeing none, let's go to the public one last time on these items for highway. If you have comments, raise your hand on Teams or come forward in the NATU Hill room. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Crossley. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. We are going to take, thank you, Ms. Ridge. Thank you, Mr. Thank Turner. You. We appreciate you being here. I, mean, I don't have a copy of your script, so I don't have, I don't have a copy either. So the next item would have been the ARPA, but we did table that because there's no pending item. What I'm going to do is give counselors okay. a seven-minute stretch. That means it's five, 6.56. We're going to come back together at 7.03 to move through the remaining items, which were substantial enough that I, I need to break you just at this point. So we'll okay. come back at 7.03 and go from there. Thank you. Uh, council members, come back to order. We are now on uh, the next item, which was one that was added, and that is the soil and water job descriptions addition. Uh, we want to note that PAC members approve forwarding this particular request to the full council for discussion regarding the need of this position, and if they wish to forward it on to WIS, for classification, as has been noted, this was an item budgeted in the last budget. I'm going to get a motion here. Council, I move to open a discussion regarding the soil and water's new conservation resource specialist job description and approval to forward both to the, both the specialist and the manager job descriptions to Wagner, Irwin, and Shield, also known as WIS, to be reviewed for classification. Second. All right. Do you have something I don't have? And we are fortunate to be uh, joined by our members of our Soil and Water Conservation Board. I said that right, correct? Right. correct. All right. I'll let you introduce yourselves and speak to this particular request. Well, good evening. Whitney Schlegel. I'm the chair of the Monroe County Soil and Water Conservation District Board. I'm Dallas Conger. I'm the senior supervisor on the board now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll welcome supervisors. Awesome. Would you like to speak to this? I know this has been a, a work of the the board for some time, and a couple, at least three years on this council that I've observed this. Um, anything you want to discuss about uh, this, and then I'm going to ask for PAC members to maybe comment on their end of this. I'm sure. Uh, well, yes, indeed, it has. Uh, um, been uh, in motion for a while, and uh, the need for uh, this position has um, become even more evident in the last year as the uh, um, conservation efforts of our landowners uh, has increased and their, um, their need for expertise in this area has uh, um, come to the Soil and Water Conservation District uh, so that uh, we are um, um, eager uh, to be able to offer this assistance. Uh, throughout the state, uh, Monroe County is looked at as a leader uh, in its efforts to assist landowners. And also we value all the partnerships that we um, have with the different stakeholders in our county, stormwater, um, uh, it's uh, McIris, I can go through my alphabet soup here of different acronyms, and uh, that and working together to uh, to address uh, these needs. So um, we and we appreciate the support of the commissioners and of the council, and uh, we look forward to uh, being able to um, to serve our landowners. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councilor Iverson, do you want to speak to the PAC end of this? Sure, yeah. Uh, yesterday, uh, the Personnel Administration Committee met. Uh, this issue came to us 
uh, and uh, we had a, a good discussion about um, the grant that supported this position in the past, that the grant funding was ending uh, in December of this year, and that we uh, were being asked to uh, support this position out of the general fund uh, when the grant funding ends. Uh, given uh, that uh, the other members of PAC uh, have been very instrumental on the long-term uh, fiscal committee, uh, they wanted to bring this issue to the general counsel for your input on whether this should be uh, taken to uh, Wagner, Irwin, and Sheely, or, or WIS, uh, for them to classify this position, uh, and uh, they're therefore uh, moving this forward. Uh, again, uh, the timeline uh, that we discussed yesterday in PAC was this position's funding will end in December, so we do have some time to, uh, to consider uh, ways forward. Okay. All right. So we've got, so PAC's vote was to forward that to us to figure out if we want to send the job descriptions on. Getting a little repeat. I don't know if it's me. And then, I don't know where it's on at. Yeah, if anybody's got their computer unmuted, it might be doing that. Unmuted. Okay. So it might just be me hearing it. Um, so, so PAC voted to for this, so uh, for us to review it and then make a decision whether this goes to Wagner, Irwin, and Sheely, and the rationale behind PAC was figure out if we have money for this. Is that correct? And if it's needed. Okay. That's correct. And, and, Councilor Hawk. And that is uh, the reason for my discussion earlier was that I think when we're looking at brand new positions um, and what fund is going to come out of, that we have a thorough knowledge of what we have already added on at the beginning of the budget and where we are now. And then um, part of the rules of PAC years ago was that you've got all this kind of work done in advance of budget hearings. You don't, you don't move forward with it, you just have it in the stack. And then you say, when you get ready for budget hearings, we know what kind of revenue we have, we know what we've already spent. Uh, adding on extra hours or whatever we've done in the budgets, and we know how much money we have left of ongoing money, not just cash in the in the fund, because we may be heavy on cash in the fund, but that's going to be reducing down, but our ongoing expenses. And that's an important thing to know before we uh, move forward to saying we're going to start replacing grant funds with, with general funds. Um, and that is simply because, as you know, and you're always talking about the department that you love so much, you're, where your mother, where you grew up waiting on your mother, um, they will operate a lot on grant funds, and we know that those grant funds are not always stable. And so uh, those are decisions that you have to look at and go, here's, here's the group that wants some adjustments, and we're going into budget hearings, and these are the ones we can do, and maybe we can't do them all. Now, that's the reason why I thought the fiscal body should be aware of where we were. However, it appears that the report I asked for is not available. And so if you folks, or, or what you could say is, we want to move forward, send it off to WIS. We've not said we're going to do it. We'll just send it off to WIS and see what, how it comes out and then make the financial decision later. You folks do whatever you want. I just thought it was a responsible thing to do for the fiscal body to be able to weigh in before we start spending money at WIS with a new position. I open this up to other counselors to comment. Okay. Councilor Bunsen, did you want to add something? I have a question. I thought okay. um, in our budget discussions last year that we dealt with this position and no we didn't mm -hmm. did we include it in our budget no i'm going to take that so, as an inquiry Council, and I, Councilor we did. Hawk and i are having a disagreement <laughs> so we need to understand this so because her concerns are very valid if we didn't do it and if we did it then her concerns are uh have been met I I, I want to answer this just for the public watching this. We did include this position in our budget. 
We have been waiting for this to go through PAC. We did include it in the budget. I've received confirmation of that from the commissioner's administrator that it was included in their budget for a fact. Um, one thing I'll also add to one thing I'll also add to this being included in the budget is I think it would be bad for us not to say that we that the commissioners as well as the administrator gave a green light to get this into PAC. Had that not happened, we wouldn't be having this. And several counselors uh, at the microphone very strenuously over the years, including Councilor Wiltz, who is not with us, but would want to say that, have made the case for this position. So this is not new today. And it was so not new that we did budget it in the last budget. I see Councilor McKim's hand raised. OK. <clears throat> Thank you. And actually, this I'm just following up with uh, Councillor Munson's question. So just to confirm, and I guess this would be really a, a council office uh, question, this position is currently funded in the 2024 budget, correct? That is correct. Why? Okay, thank you. But um, actually, oh. I, I, was, I think um, I'll look it up really quick. I'm not sure if it was budgeted at the minimum or if it was budgeted at the three-year and yes, it went through the whole budget process and you guys agreed to it at that time. We talked about it. Because I believe so, it was under, because when we did it in, that was like in September, October, that the idea was to have the job descriptions done and ready uh, at the first of the year and we kind of hit a stalemate. And so we're still, you okay. know, so we're still working on the job description process. But the idea was but, to have this ready to go. Okay, but so yeah. my, I had a question. Uh, I had asked this question at, at PAC, and I want to ask it again. The current grant is actually funded to the end of this calendar year. Is that correct? Correct. Right. That's the information okay. we heard at PAC yesterday. However, right. Martha Miller, are you saying yes? Martha Miller is saying yes. You want to come to the microphone? Mr. President, yeah. why were we not all informed of this? Hold on, I, I think this is incorrect. Hold on. Oh, I think I have the Hold floor on. here. Yeah, Councilor Iverson's got a question to right, Ms. And, Miller. Uh, Ms. Thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah. Martha Miller, Monroe County Slow Water Conservation District Manager. And I hate to say this, but could you ask your question again? <laughs> yes, uh, the, the question that we want to know is the grant funding for this position uh, does it conclude at the end of this calendar year? December 31st, 2024 is the last day we will be able to do anything with this money. Yes. Excellent. Thank you for your answer. Oh, okay. So, so thank you. That's, I guess what I'm saying is we're actually already a year ahead on, on the funding for this position. Mm -hmm. If we've already appropriated yes. money for this year, but yet we don't actually need it, all that money is going to revert. And so we're essentially already a year yeah. ahead in terms of, uh, of funding for this position. One quick thing in addition to that, in uh, January, three years ago, when we knew we were getting this money, we came to council so you guys could prepare and we were told at that point by various council members that um, we had three years to address it and we would address it. And okay. I, I would like to let everybody know that it was budgeted at a minimum at a Pat C level, so, and that was because we didn't really know what was going, you know, where it was going to land. But all of that will then revert. That is correct. Correct. Okay. Right. Nice. I mean, I definitely support yes. moving forward. I just think it's. I, I, yeah, I don't even know how to address this. Why did? What's been going on? that this was added in, in this year's budget, and yet, why, why, this is really backwards. And why have we had to be spending so much time talking about the budgeting process and whether or not there was fiscal, what was already done? Why didn't somebody tell us it was in there? Believe me, no, I don't think you already knew it was in the budget. And, Evidently, someone has figured out it was already in the budget. Why didn't somebody say so at PAC meeting? I mean, the, I really am pretty 
pretty upset about this because I've spent a lot of time trying to research this and trying to figure out what's the fair thing to do and look at the budgets overall. And then you wait until this meeting, it's like, oh. Councillor Hawk, I, I appreciate your comments. I'll just uh, say that I believe this discussion in the budget last year was pretty well discussed and narrated. And I'll say because I formally, I'm one of, I think, three who have served as liaisons to this department. This one has been talked about since I had less silver on the sides of my head. <laughs> and I, I don't mean to be facetious on that, but I believe some of that silver came because of discussions on this item. This has been discussed. My concern, look, we do have some money management to figure out when grant ends, when we start paying and all that. But my concern is that if any department would ever make a request and have something held for three years, while other departments come in and get things much quicker, some within this year. And so I wanna make sure that this department is not being put through different paces than what is fair to the average bear. And we have before us two elected supervisors under a system we partner with the state on. So I just wanna note all of that is it's incumbent. So I'm grateful that this is even here today like this, but I think we budgeted with the thought it'd be a little bit quicker in how it did, but neither here nor there were here. Other comments or questions from council on this item? Councilor Iverson. All right, so I'm gonna take this in a little bit of a different direction. Okay. <laughs> to me, this job description is about conservation protecting forests, supporting fall, small farmers, restorative agriculture. But I like to think, and I mentioned this yesterday in PAC, about climate change as a, as a pie. And I'm hungry, so I'm gonna talk about pie. A pie cut in four pieces. Conservation is one of those slices. The second slice is resiliency. We just had the commissioners celebrate Earth Day with a proclamation celebrating the first ever climate resilience plan of a county in all of Indiana's history. That's the second slice of the pie. The third slice of the pie is a climate resilience, or excuse me, a climate action plan. And the fourth sl slice of a pie is a greenhouse gas inventory. I think if we're going to send this to WIS, that we need to send the job description to an expanded set of stakeholders that understand the whole pie. Because if we're gonna be spending finite resources on a job, or we've already you know, appropriated the jobs, it's gonna be reverted, but what it, we need to be investing in the whole pie. Conservation, yes. Resiliency, yes. Greenhouse gas inventory, yes. Climate action. Right now, we do not have a staff person doing this work. We're putting the work on other staff people. And the last point I'll make is that the advice we're getting from climate partners is that we are leaving grants on the table because we don't have someone to apply for grants. Applying for grants is in this job description. So we know that this position can apply for grants and it would be well uh, my advice to this council is to broaden the scope of this job description to account for the whole pie. All right. And if we want to offer any friendly amendment formally, I mean, we could take that into what we consider here. Councilor Iverson, do you want to word it a certain way or you want to think on that? I, I think that moving forward with an amendment to this motion is not in the, the kind of the, the nature of what I was recommending. I think okay. it was more in terms of looking at the job description and its wording uh, that <sighs> staff would take on that work to broaden it out a little bit more. Okay, so maybe hold this okay. and get that then sent to us. That would be, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, other questions or comments from council? Councilor Munson. Uh, this job description has gone through a lot, um, and I hope we can, can set up a schedule to um, have people uh, give their input on expanding it for the, the purposes you're recommending, Councillor Iverson. I just would like to see this not dr drug out further and further, because this, this is... Uh, difficult. We also have uh, a very capable person 
that we don't want to leave on a hook either. Um, so do you have a suggestion about uh, some sort of timeline for us? I think we could get the necessary parties together within a week or two. Okay. So maybe if we held this until next meeting, we could satisfy could, that. Could we table this then? Would that be the appropriate thing to do? Okay. Okay. I move, I move we table this agenda item until our uh, February 28th meeting. Oh. Um, Mark, May. May. I forgot. May. I forgot about several months, didn't I? You're doing better than me. So May 28th. Is there a second on that? Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion on the amendment that's on this motion. Oh, Councillor McKim, or do you all have any comments you'd like I to just, make? Uh, Councillor Iverson, I, um, I think it's a matter of language in that description, mm -hmm. because in fact, uh, both um, the mission of the Soil and Water Conservation District is central to, uh, it works with climate change mm -hmm. and, all, and the areas that you discuss. And in our principal partner in the, on the federal side of National um, Natural Resources and Conservation Service, USDA, and USDA there's uh, mandates and plans that have come from there that we follow those practices when we work with landowners. So I, I think it's just a matter of the language. I do, t I do I too. So too. I, I don't and think we, that there's going to be a radical reworking yeah. here. It's not mission. Because we but actually do go after those grants, and we have uh, our watershed grants, our Sentinel Landscape uh, partners, our partners with Friends of Lake Monroe. I mean, all of the different partners that we work with, which are listed, uh, in that position are all working together to address the, you know, the, the overall um, uh, climate change, issues of climate change. So I, I think it might just be a matter of language. And I, having written and rewritten that job description many times, uh, it is, uh, it was challenging to work within the language uh, parameters that were given uh, mm -hmm. for the description. So, uh, I'm, I'm sure it can be easily um, addressed. I think so too, and I, I'm in agreement with you that, that, that it's probably an issue of language much more than starting from scratch, right. which I don't want to do right. either. No. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate all that. Okay. Yeah. Council so I've looked at several iterations of the job description, and I really think it is a matter of tweaking, not rewriting, just... Um, to satisfy the concerns of, of people in the county that uh, want, want to see the grant writing uh, be specified. We've got this motion. Thank you, Council Munson. We've got a motion now to, to hold this until the 28th, no, I'm saying that, uh, May 28th. Um, I'm going to take us to a roll call vote on that if there's no other comments on that. Our, Councilor or Council um, Ms. Turner King, do I need public comment on the tabling motion? I don't think so. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, let's do a roll call vote on the motion to table until the 28th. Councilor McKim. No. Councilor Hawk is not present. Councilor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed majority five, four to one. Okay. All right. So we will work on any feedback or input there. We appreciate openness to that and patience in this process. And we'll come back to this on the 28th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for waiting patiently through all of this for a three-year process. Mm -hmm. So we will keep moving on this. We're, we're getting closer. All right. In touch with speed. Yeah. I said I'll be in touch with speed. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. We'll move on to item 13 on our agenda, which is a report or a presentation of the 2022-2023 annual report from our own Councillor Munson for the Food and Beverage Tax Advisory Commission. 
oh, the whole room has emptied out. <laughs> this is not important for you to hear directly from me. Although I should tell you that uh, Counselor Hawk gave her uh, her family background for her council work, <laughs> and Counselor Decker did. So now I'm going to tell you that my family, I grew up in the restaurant business, and I was my first job was folding napkins I, when I was four. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Food and Beverage <laughs> Tax Advisory Commission uh, met April 26th. And this includes representatives of, the, of county government and city government and uh, entertainment and dining establishments in our city and county. And we approved uh, the annual report that is go going to be published on the uh, County Council website so that everybody can see this. That's the important thing. We're, uh, yes, it is a requirement of our uh, ordinance, but it is really, um, I think, a commitment by us to report to the public about the good things that have been done with the taxes that they have paid while dining and drinking. So, do you have? And when you see the report, if you have questions, please please bring them up. But it's it's a it's a sort of a boring technical report, but I think you can see what how the money was spent, and that's the point. That's it. Thank you very much, Councillor Munson, and we appreciate very much your service on that. All right. Can, can I? Just, yeah, Councillor Iverson. Just real quick, there's a figure one in your report shows the historical revenue from, and it's just up and to the right. Yes, and that that is good, D despite COVID. Despite COVID, yeah. Despite COVID. There was a dip down for COVID, but we came back up and kept going up. Yep, we have so. a strong economy. Yes. Thank you very much. We'll move on to item 14, uh, which was tabled from April 23rd, and this is uh, a resolution 2023 OT. Council, I move to approve resolution 2024 20, updating and establishing policies and procedures to recognize knowledge, skills, and abilities for Monroe County government applicants and eligible transferring Monroe County employees. Second. All right. Ms. Turner King, you want to speak to the work on this? And by the way, I said the wrong number in the intro, it's 2024-20, right? Yeah, I apologize for that. Um, so I worked on a draft of the KSA policy to reflect comments from the council, I think it was in the early April, maybe late last February meeting. Um, in essence, the previous version of the policy applied only to applicants with non-Monroe County work history. And the thought process behind this was we wanted to amend the policy so that applicants who did have Monroe County history who may be returning to the county after leaving briefly would also benefit from a KSA, which is a knowledge, skills, and abilities um, request that would determine the compensation level the applicant would come in. And so what I did was mainly edit Section 2. Section 2 um previously pertained to individuals who were, wor were working part-time for two years and then hired in at one year. And now it um, makes it so that section two, or section one is for applicants with no Monroe County history and section two is applicants with Monroe County history. Um, So section two would apply to individuals who are employed by the county and then had a break in history but are not active county employees transferring from one department to the other. And last year there was a conversation when we edited the KSA um, policy about the concern for departments in essence poaching, poaching employees. And so this is written to also prevent that. So if you're a current Monroe County employee and you're transferring from one department to the other, you can't get a higher KSA. And then secondly, um, it acknowledges 
that part-time history is not a hindrance to a KSA, but it could be a benefit depending on um, what that part-time history is. And in speaking with council office and our personnel administrator, there is, um, I think, a discussion point that should be had regarding whether part-time history should um, act as a benefit. So currently, it's drafted so that it's not a hindrance. It could be a benefit. And the question is, do we want it to be a benefit? And I think the concern that comes about is an individual could work part-time and only work you know 10 hours a week if they're working 10 hours a week for five years does that qual does that put them in stance to qualify for a KSA um, and I also think the staff's concern is if you somehow put an hour limit which is currently how I drafted it to say working more than 20 hours or more in a part-time status that requires a lot of staff effort to go and confirm how many hours the person worked um, part-time So, counselors, this has been a process. I appreciate you've worked with Councilor Wiltz on this, who's not here to speak to that, but I, I passed those meetings a couple times, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of sweat and papers moving, and that's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. Counselors, is there, are there questions, comments on any of this that Ms. Turner King has given us? The sheriff did speak to this earlier in saying that some of the policies that we're doing are helping to attract good quality folks in, so I'll open this up to counselors. Yeah, Councilor Iverson. Let me kick things off by saying, I think the system that we created a while ago where there can be an independent determination by staff is really helpful. I think bringing everything to council really dragged the process down. And so I think, I, I like to see that number five has been duplicated in the additional sections. That's very helpful. I think that, that's good. In terms of part-time and determining part-time, my opinion comes down to your available hours to work on this. Right now, my understanding is that there's not a lot of extra hours to throw at this, and that seems like a hindrance to, especially if someone has, has banked a significant amount of part-time hours and multiple different institutions. That, that seems difficult. Uh, un, I should say unnecessarily difficult. So that's, that's where my thinking is coming down right now. I, I want, would like to be able to say that it would not be um, a benefit nor a hindrance. And that, because I don't wanna be having to go dig for timesheets and that kind of thing to verify that this person consistently worked 20 hours or more. And, and if, if they list it on their resume and that kind of thing and it's applicable, then we'll look at it. But if, you know, I, I don't want to have to go and um, verify it. Mm -hmm. And it would either be myself or it would be the, um, um, personnel administrator in the employee services. So one of us would have to do it and you know, I'm coming up on budget time and to me this is just to, so that it would speed the process up. I think it would slow the process down if we're going to be looking at part-time hours being count accountable. I think there are two options moving forward for council to consider. The first option would be to eliminate part-time completely and say it's not a hindrance or a benefit. Option two would be to say part-time hours could count but have no qualifying amount. So part-time in any capacity, but you would, but I would point out that that um, could give someone a greater benefit if they worked only, you know, a few years at ten or fifteen hours. I, I, I agree that the former is preferable to the latter. So eliminate it part-time, not a benefit nor a hindrance. That is my opinion, but I don't want to speak for everyone. 
the, the, sort of the origins on that language, as I recall a few weeks back, it was literally thinking about what helps or doesn't help and what gets in the way. There's a infamous story about the late Senator Birch by finding a navigate, making a navigable uh, body of water in the middle of a landlocked Jackson County uh, to get some grant funding. And he used some sort of language that did that. And I remember th literally us <laughs> thinking of that meeting and saying, here we've got something helping, harming. Why not just say not help nor harm? So um, if, it, if, if we think that's what fulfills what would help the, assist the sheriff, I think that'd be awesome. The other thing is with what Michelle's talking about, I just want to remind kind of council, and I hate to say it like that, but I think sort of the financial director role that we have and all of our folks are doing more than they were doing when I came in here in January 2019. I think we have blown up all these jobs to managing a lot. Part of it's we demand a lot, and maybe we need to work on that a little bit more. But I, I would not want chasing down a part-time right. record from golly who knows what to become part of that if, if, if we can avoid it. Does that make sense? Any other comments or questions? Yes, Councilor Munson. So, so I would want to know about uh, full-time and part-time work, but can't that be handled simply in the application process and not something that is verified by our staff? <laughs> so the full-time, the way it works is if a department had requests a KSA for an applicant, it lists the full-time work. Um, if the applicant has prior Monroe County work history, staff would verify it, similar to the way we'd verify prior years of service, mm -hmm. um, which involves looking at a PERF report. And I don't think part-time hours is listed on the PERF report. Right. What I will say in regards to the KSA, since I just mentioned prior to years of service, one of the big things that this policy is doing is, so if a department had request a KSA for an applicant, and the applicant has prior years of, or has prior Monroe County work history. What it will do is the personnel administrator and the council administrator will look at the KSA and determine if it's a three year or an eight year level. And then they will also go verify the employee's prior years of service. The higher of the two governed. And so, for example, if someone left with 10 years of Monroe County experience, but then only qualifies for an eight-year KSA, they will come in at the 10-year compensation rate honoring their prior years of service. If someone only had two years of prior service but then can qualify for a three-year KSA, the higher amount so the KSA would govern. And I think um, eliminating part-time as, or saying that part-time work is neither a hindrance or a benefit um, creates some similarities between how we count prior years of service. Prior years of service doesn't count part-time, so it seems equitable to say that it wouldn't count for a KSA. Thank you. Yeah. All right, other comments or questions? So I guess the question before us is adopting this resolution and finalizing this. And it would be with the amendment to um, some language that... It, and basically incorporates the conversation that we just had, that part-time would not be a hindrance nor benefit. Want to offer that from the floor or how, what works best? If you give me about two minutes, I can edit it, and it won't even be that long. All right. We, we've got two minutes to get it right. Thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I just want to think this out a little bit while, while Ms. Lauren King is, is writing and typing here. Is, is that what we heard from the Sheriff's Department is yeah, we're getting applicants is, from all over. Is, and they've just got yes. all sorts of experience that they're bringing to the table. And I think the changes that we're making give staff latitude to really uh, continue to attract folks that we're not going to have to do a lot of training with. I, I think that's really important. The other thing I really like about this is, is the way that we're addressing that poaching issue. Uh, I, I, that's that's really a benefit to me because you know we hear about that as liaisons to different departments is is that that's happening and so that's that's helpful I think. I feel like I'm filibustering. <laughs> the next name in the white pages. <laughs> 
I'm always happy in moments like this if it helps to fill time to tell you all stories about my week now. <laughs> we will wait for Miss Turner King. <laughs> yeah, Jen and I have not shared our family histories no, yet. No, I have not. Anybody got anything you've not done? <laughs> I am not from here. Everyone goes, oh my gosh, not another story. <laughs> <laughs> For the public watching, just so that you know, it is things like this that we get right in these meetings that help our departments, our elected officials, such as the sheriff and uh, many others, do things right. And it's a never-ending process to get all of this right. We build upon this every single time. So I'm joining the team's meeting now to share the document. And while I'm doing that, I will also mention that this resolution would be retroactive to September. So any individual that was hired in September, this will apply to, which kind of catches those, I think it was four people that the sheriff office um, specifically mentioned. Okay, thank you. All right, here it comes up. It's a good time for me to also mention this week, <laughs> week, coming weekend, as was mentioned earlier, Harrodsburg Heritage Day is a beautiful festival, 10 o'clock fireworks show. Beautiful parade, two o'clock. I believe that's Councilor Iverson's district. As I will be in Iowa City. Iowa City, Iowa. Another good area. So tell us about that area. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born and raised. <laughs> and we, we're, we were close to getting a little Iverson family history. <laughs> we were close. And we were close. He didn't but I'm decorate gonna, it. I'm going <laughs> to withhold so that people keep tuning into these meetings. Here. So, hey, by Miss Turner King again. <laughs> okay, next time. We're getting, we're getting Tune have, in next time. We're going to awesome. have to draw straws <laughs> next time. Um, so now the resolution says it should be noted that the applicant's prior employment history must be that of a full-time employee any prior employee part-time history will not act as a hindrance nor a benefit as it pertains to request for a three-year or eight-year level salary level as a part of a full-time KSA. Okay. And I think that's the only amendment that needs to be made to address that issue. Council, without objection, uh, or actually the chair uh, offer that we accept the amendment as written and changed by council. Second. Got a motion yeah, second. and a second. All right. <laughs> Any discussion on that amendment? All right. We will go to a roll call vote to on the amendment. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Crossley. Yes. yes. Motion passed unanimous. All right, now we've got the underlying resolution. Counselors, any other discussion or comment or uh, emotions on the resolution? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna offer to the public, if you wish to make a comment on this KSA resolution, you may do so. Come forward to the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. Councilor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Crossley. Yes. 
Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Munson. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. King, for doing that live in the moment. That takes us to item B, also from legal department. Council, I move to amend the 2024 salary ordinance and the following funds. General Fund Jail 1000-0380, Public Safety Lit Jail 1170-0380, Correctional Lit Jail 1233-0000, uh, Account Line 17-310, Training Bonus from Pay $250 per person per year to Continual Training Pay to be paid an additional 12 cents on the hourly rate and simultaneously create a new account line 10702 hearing officer team member pay <laughs> to be paid an additional 48 cents on the hourly rate for a maximum of five correction officers pursuant to the collective bargaining agreement Phew. second <laughs> So these salary um, ordinance changes incorporates changes from the recently signed collective bargaining agreement for the correctional officers. Um, previously, the training bonus was paid in a lump sum. It's now gone to an hourly rate, and there previously wasn't um, a supplemental bonus for being a member of the hearing officer team, so it adds this. Thank you very much. Council, do you have questions or comments? Councilor McKim. <clears throat> yes, do we have a sense of the fiscal impact of this change? I mean, I know it's fairly minimal given that the, uh, I mean, for the, the hourly versus lump sum, it's pretty much the, what, the, the perf cost? Is that uh, the primary difference? We at one point had it when we did the collective bargaining agreement that we, I think, originally discussed, I want to say, like, in November, December. Okay. Um, and I can try to find it real quick. No, no I mean, if you could get, get that to me or get that to us later, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm going to support I'm going to support it. But Thank you, Councillor McKim. Other questions or comments? And again, this is the fruitful work of bargaining as it sort of, sort of reaches uh, the conclusions and then some, and then we'll start it all over again, right? Okay, I'll do, go to comments from the public. If you have any, please come forward to the Nat U Hill or raise your hand on Teams. Seeing none, we will go to a roll call vote. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you very much. That takes us to council comments. Councillors, any comments? I have a few myself, but I'll let you go first. Iverson. Please. I have one. So one week ago, we discovered Oh, I should say we rediscovered that Monroe County has a turnout problem. Yeah. Monroe County voted, well, a minority of the residents voted. You see about 90,000 people are registered to vote, and of these, about 15% or about 8,000 people actually went to the polls. In contested elections, the vast majority of winners won with less than 5% of public support. The exception to this 5% threshold is Cheryl Munson and Trent Deckard. Well done. Good job. Take a moment and digest the oh. concept that less than 5% of folks supported the winners. Think of a time you were in a grocery store. There were more than 20 people there. 19 <laughs> of them did not vote. We have a turnout problem. And just this past week, I've talked to many people about this turnout problem. And first, in terms of solutions, I'm very grateful to the work that's being done right now in vote centers. There was just an article in the Herald Times about this. Read it, that's gonna be helpful. Second, I'm gonna be spending time until the general election talking with partners, having listening sessions, and coming up with evidence-based solutions to address this problem. We have a turnout problem, and we need to fix it. Thank you very much. 
Councillor Iverson, Councillor Crossley. Thank you. Um, I feel like a lot has happened over the past several weeks. Um, one thing that did happen was that on April 27th, myself along with Council Member Issa Kasari, um, Mayor Kerry Thompson, and State Senator Shelley Yoder all had a joint constituent meeting, and that was a very robust conversation. Um, it also just gives me more food for thought. A lot of people are asking questions related to the city. I was a little jealous that county government doesn't get as much love as the city, but maybe <laughs> while doing these uh, joint constituent meetings that we will get more people um, involved and more questions will be asked. I guess I should also be careful what I wish for because they probably will come. <laughs> so the next time that we have a joint constituent meeting, again, those will be held for Saturday. Um, and so looks like fourth Saturday this month is May 25th, which is Memorial Day weekend. Um, so I enjoy those healthy conversations um, and I hope to see more people. The first one was a very small group of people. The second one was um, a, a, quite a few people, maybe had to deal with some murky people that were there. Um, Council Member Iverson was there as well to attest to it, but I appreciate people coming out and continuing to listen more of what we offer the community. And also, I just really like the conversation that we had today about the CIB. And I really, in all seriousness, really hope that our city council um, colleagues will really listen to what it is. And I'm interested to hear what they have to say in their upcoming letter that we're supposed to receive. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Councilor Munson. So I wanted to ask Councilor Crossley, where did you have your, your uh, constituent meeting? This one, this time around, was um, at the Monroe County Public Library downtown at the uh, auditorium. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Councillor McKim, Councillor Deckard, and I have done joint uh, constituent meetings, and we did not have a great turnout. And, uh, but maybe we need to include our city counterparts. So, uh, doing this as, uh, we did this as the at-large mm -hmm. counselors, and so maybe we need to invite our at-large city counselors to join us and see what we can do. We'll give it a shot. Good idea. Other council comments? I, I, I've got a few, and I just please bear with me here, and I do want to kind of pick up on that last discussion item. Uh, Councilor Sidney Zulik and I talked about doing something in the fall. Maybe we could incorporate that there, uh, mm -hmm. particularly for her district, and I'm always refreshed by her energy that she brings to our local system. Um, I want to mention uh, tomorrow is Peace Officer Memorial Day, and it is a day uh, that has long been observed in this county, but I want to talk about it here. It's a day that we honor those local, state, and federal peace officers who we have lost in the service uh, it, it, while they were in service. We will never be able to bring any of those individuals back and their families. The sacrifice that has been made is beyond anything I could ever say, but tomorrow there will be a ceremony at 11 o'clock here at the courthouse. I look forward to being there, um, and, and I know, I think Councilor Munson's gonna be there as well, Councilor Iverson, all, all welcome for that. It's at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock tomorrow. I also- It's yeah. at 11 o'clock on um, South, the just, lawn right by the South side, and if, um, the South yeah. entrance, and if, the forecast suddenly changes and it looks like rain, I think it's gonna be moved inside to okay. the middle of the courthouse. Okay. So, so come to Good. the courthouse, look for the crowd. If it's outside, it's sunny. If it's inside, it's rainy. Um, I also wanna mention we had um, Mr. Spoonmore, who's the, the head of the, or on the CIB and the head of the Bloomington Chamber, they had a tremendous ceremony last week uh, that a few of us were able to go to. and I. They specifically in the Valor Awards are recognizing some of our leaders among those individuals uh, in, that are peace officers and responders. And I'm, just, I'm gonna read the names of, of those that they recognize because they should be honored in this moment. 
Um, from law enforcement, Valor Awards uh, recognition went to Trooper Ben Burris of the Indiana State Police Department, Corporal DeAndre Moxley of the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, Officer Je Jeff Raybold of the Bloomington Police Department, Deputy, Deputy Chief George Robinson of the Ellsville Police Department, Officer Ryan Skaggs of IU Police Department. Among fire department, fire departments, we have Battalion Chief Clay Edwards of the Monroe Fire Protection District, Captain Kenny Hinkle, City of Bloomington Fire Department, Captain Matthew Seabot, uh, I hope I'm saying that right, Ellsville Fire Department, and Dispatch, we have Jared Bailey, Monroe County Emergency Dispatch Center, as well as in the Correctional Center, Sergeant Paul Patton from the Sheriff's Office. Also, it was key, one of our former council members, uh, David Hamilton, no longer with us, there's a Lifetime Achievement Award given in his name, uh, and it was given this year by uh, to Captain Jeff Hacker, and it was a beautiful speech that he gave. These were good awards that were done, and I wanted to recognize those folks here in my comments. The last thing I'll just say generally is I wanna thank the clerk for uh, and the election board and all the workers that conducted the primary. It, we're a week later and, and the community is at peace among all that, and that's a testament to democracy. I also want to thank those that ran, including our own, Councilor Iverson, and who has been a fountain of discussing the public good and the needs of the public and was definitely so tonight and through his campaign, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the attitude that you bring to that effort. I also wanna recognize that this was the first time I voted in a county council at large primary that I did not have the opportunity to vote for Jeff McKim. And I just wanna know, we'll be talking about Jeff, I'm sure a lot this year, but Jeff, you are loved and appreciated. And when I did cast my ballot, I noticed that was the first time I've not been able to do that. And so mm -hmm. we're gonna celebrate you a lot in this, yeah. and we're gonna do a lot too, uh, but uh, your, your service and the way that you do that service is tremendous. Councilor McKim and I were on the phone earlier today and uh, it's like two brothers trying to get to the end result. And that is how do we get this done? And I just am grateful for that. So. Anyway, thank you, Jeff. And with that, any other counselor comments? All right, I've said too much. Thank you, friends. We are now adjourned. Thank you.